Mate, how are you? Mate, what a chase this has been. Oh, what? <laughs> I know, mate. I feel like a wee guy in school, a wee birds, we try to get off him for ages. Like, all right, come on, I'll get off you. I know. So do you want to get off us? Definitely, mate. <laughs> Definitely. Do you know, I was walking around Morrison's last night, and I'm like, I fucking got to message him. I'm like, I would need to get this sorted, because I get so many folk asking for you right. to come on the pod. I don't know what they think is going to happen on the pod, and everything I wish is going to be the, the main point here. Um, John Viola t- did tell me you were a shite kisser, though. Oh, it's fucking outrageous, did man. Did you use far too much tongue? Outrageous, we him. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'd obviously spoke before. You've been asked about 8 million questions about the podcast, yeah. rightly so, because it's brilliant. But I was wanting to talk more about Broomhill. Um, Relegated, hopeless. Not a chance, mate. Not <laughs> a chance. Do you know what the, f- the, f- the first thing I, I picked up on? See, when I watched the documentary and you had said that I think you were doing South doing interviews and you were wanting to make the move into kind of coaching full time and you were talking about kind of leaving open goal. How far along were you in that thought process? Were you like... Oh, if I got the Peter Head job, aye. then that would be me a... Uh, Just get done. rid of it and... No, get rid of it. Obviously, I've got a wee bit of sharing that in the... Aye, so I'd aye. maybe like help for afar, but aye. in terms of hosting and, and doing the podcast, then I wouldn't have done that. I don't think you could be like a manager in, in the football leagues. And I don't like when managers... No, I don't like it. It's obviously there. Everyone's situation is different when mm-hmm. like managers on radios and... Aye. Uh, my full focus would have been on my team so if we were maybe I had trained Monday, Wednesday with Peter Head I'd have been at games Tuesday, Thursday Aye. trying to watch Aye. kind of opposition watch other teams players players that I could sign that mm-hmm. summer so it would have been a full time job for me I'd have kind of committed to to doing that uh, I'd have been up at Peter Head in terms of local kids I'd have wanted them to see my face Aye. constantly I'd have been in about the, the, the town um, so I had no that's what I've always wanted to do for a long time now maybe the last two and a half year mm-hmm. my big fucking goal is to is to be a football manager and right. be as successful as I can at, at that. So obviously well, I love the podcast and that. It's a great job. I right. realise how lucky I am, but my real ambition and my passion and drives football managing right. coaching. So that would have, that would have got full, full focus. That's mental to think that, but the, of you not being part of that because oh, you think, think of it, it's... No, I don't know. I disagree. It probably, I remember listening to Gary Neville. He took himself off Monday Night Football because he thought it was maybe getting a wee bit same old, same old. So Aye. I think you've got to evolve, mate. That's obviously why we've done the football team and we're trying to think of other things that we can do as well. But, you know, it's, everything goes on, mate. Aye. I think there's one person that's ever that important. That people, I would imagine that people watch it more for... I, I think a lot of Rangers fans watch it for Andy's opinion because I think Andy's brilliant on it and then probably the other half watch it for, for Slaney and he's... Aye. He so said that would have still been there. Again, I think both of them with Kev as well, and I think they'd be fine doing it themselves, mate. I think aye. they've got that personality going there. Again, we've added Faddy this year, who's aye, been good. unbelievable, mate. I could good. just, I mean, you, me and Slinny always say, Faddy could sit and ask himself questions and then aye. answer them, mate, and you'd watch it because his knowledge is unbelievable. So, you need to keep evolving, like I said. Aye. It's not all just doing it to me and I won't go. I think there's, mm-hmm. there's loads of people that make it. Aye. And see the, the management side of it, what was the kind of point for you where you thought, this is what I want, this is my... Can I next plan for my career? Um, so again, Peter Head, mm-hmm. Jim, Jim McNally's been brilliant with me. I was at a proper loose end with football. Right. I was beginning to hate it when I was at Dundee. Jim kind of got my love back for it. And um, obviously, I started coaching kids at Selic mm-hmm. when I went for full time right. football or part time football. I wanted to do something that I loved. Martin Miller, who's a great guy, he was kind of head of youth at Celtic, head of youth junior at Celtic. And, mm-hmm. He's seen that I'd been went for far, uh, full-time to part-time and right. phoned us and says, I think you'd be great with the, the kids. Aye. Why don't you come in and we'll get a chat and you can come and see how you are with the kids. And I went down there and I, not just Peter Head, but that, coaching the kids at Celtic really Aye. got my love back for... What age group is that? Football. So they, they were uh, 2000 and... So they've been 10-year-old, 10, 11-year-old, right. under Aye. 11s it was. Um, and some of the kids, mate, were unbelievable. Aye. And just how they reacted to kind of how you were with them. Put a smile back on my face, and it's uh, and I would advise anybody that's want to be a manager go and coach kids because mm-hmm. that's proper coaching. Aye. That's where you coach. This is people that can't kick a ball. You can kick a ball, but no the way they should. Aye. So you need to strip it right back to the basics. You mm-hmm. need to learn how to speak to people, how people respond in terms of the are they a visual learner. Do they, is it through listening that they learn? Aye. Um, so there's so much you learn in terms of teaching kids how you speak to people, how they react to things. Because kids, kids are no daft. No, people think kids will hang on you every once. See if kids think you're a dick, mate. They'll know, they'll know, they'll know very quickly if no you know what you're talking place. about at a dinner. And you can tell for the reaction when they think you're a dick, mate. So Aye. it's good because you get to make mistakes as well. You do things. You think, right, I wouldn't do that again. And it's mad because I still say it to our boys now. I laugh about it. I'm still teaching boys at 21 things. I was teaching 11 year old kids. 
Aye, same principles. Same principles in Aye. terms of their body position when they receive the wee details in football that make a massive difference. So Aye. coaching kids and that getting my love back for it was invaluable for me. Mm -hmm. Um and then Jim, he obviously seen that I was starting to think about the game there on the pitch in terms of where he should be, he should be. And Jim, Dave, Dave McCracken, again, luck comes into your life. Aye. Dave McCracken was your first team coach. You got the fall cup job. And Jim was like, I need a coach. I think you'd be great at doing it. Mm -hmm. You fancy it? I was like, 100% I'll get a bash. Aye. And for the first night I'd done it, mate, I was like, wow, this is this is what I want to do. Aye. Try to come up with a plan and a structure to put in place to try and go and get three points Aye. on a Saturday, try to get the best out of players. Um, and it quickly became, my, it was my only thought every day. Aye. How can I make him better? What can we do there? And Jim was brilliant because he could probably see that, Jim was probably coming to the end, he's managerial, Aye. he's been doing it for years and he's probably seen that I was really young and hungry. So he kind of gave me a free reign, free reign but obviously, there was times where I was probably an arsehole and he went like, nah, you're being an arsehole there. So it's a, great, it's a great education, mate. Aye. I could have had somebody that did just say, no, nah, brilliant, brilliant, just keep doing that. But he was always very critical anytime mm -hmm. that he thought I wasn't doing something right or he thought that was really good, he would tell us. So Aye. I've had a great kind of ground under Jim as well. So I've got a lot to thank him for because he's probably the one that made me realise that, listen, he was like, Sam, you could go and do this and they bother. So he, the fact that he did the career that he's had and he had the confidence in us to go and do it, mm -hmm. kind of gives a responsibility to his team. Um, that gave us a massive conf confidence boost. Did you find it hard switching for a player to being a coach? Because you're that kind of, you're one of the boys, but then you're you're no one of the boys at that point. Definitely, because I probably was like one of the boys mate, in terms of <laughs> love to fucking carry on Aye. and try to go for it. Again, it was funny. Um, one of the first nights I'd done it, it was probably good that it happened straight away. I put a session on it. It was Big Rory, who was our best player at the time, right. Rory. Kind of hero up at Peter Ed Legend. Good guy, got on really well one bit. I don't, I put a drill on and uh, Rory said something like, this is fucking shite or something. And you get, mate, you do, you, you get butterflies Aye. and you're thinking, like, do, I, do I react here or do I let like, this pass? And it just came as, I was like, nah, you need to stamp your fucking, stamp Aye. your authority straight away. And I was like, stop. I was like, what's your problem? So me and Rory had a fucking big ding dong. Is this your first I, It was maybe session? my first or second, Fuck. first or second session. Uh, but then after it, what I realised, Jim was like, ah, good, good. Aye. I'm glad you've done that. Um, but he's like, we're going to talk to him now. Mm -hmm. Whereas I probably would have left it and Aye. me and Rory probably wouldn't have spoke, but I went up to Rory and I said, can I talk to you? Paul decided, mm -hmm. good guy that he is. He's like, no, listen, you're completely right. Or I had a chat for five, Aye. 10 minutes. And after that, it was fine. And then that kind of set the, the boys are like, right, size of coach now. He's no, he's not just a player Aye. that's going to let us get away with whatever the fuck we want. So it's that fate thing as well, I suppose. That exactly. moment kind of falls for you to do it and put a marker down. 100%. Again, it's, it's just it's my luck that, because Rory is such a big personality Aye. and he's a hero up there quite rightly so because he's a right, right good player. Um, but that test, getting that test early on was was, was brilliant for Aye. me because it gave me the confidence that like, right, you can, you can, you can speak to, you can, you can say Aye. what you want to these guys. They'll, they'll take it, see as long as what you're saying is, there's purpose behind it, there's information mm -hmm. behind it, it's not just shouting at people for the sake of shouting Aye. at it. But then you go and have a chat with them, you give them the respect that they deserve because he was the guy that he was, he scored that many goals for us. And after that, we got on great. Um, so that was a great situation that happened to me early on. It was a good learning Aye. experience. So if I would have just left it and Jim was like, no, 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 go and talk to him now. I, I understand, go, go and make, then I just let it lie that he's in a talk Aye. to each other, go and do the other side of it. So I try and get that balance now of, somebody's not doing something right, you need to tell them, but then you also need to hear that softer side where you explain it to them why you're doing it. What's well, that kind of managing different people in it? It's hard, isn't it? Before, like probably 10 years ago, people just adopted that shouting approach across the board, but. Mm -hmm. You've got 25 in a squad and you maybe get five that will react to that in a good way and the other 20 will be like... Pfft. Well, she now in a dressing room as well, Gary, see if one guy goes against you, I could fuck you. Aye. Because I don't go in the dressing room, I leave the dressing room, but the boys, that's their place. So Aye. you never know what's getting said in there. Aye. So it only takes one minute. I always say that to the boys, didn't be that one guy that's as a poison Aye. in there because Aye. very quickly as we'll go like that. I always say to the boys, I said, I'm not asking you to agree with everything that I do. Mm -hmm. If there's anything you don't like, come and tell me. Aye. Come and chat at my door, we'll sit down here and chat. Then I'd be negative about the training sessions, then I'd be negative in the dressing room because, Aye. as I say, there's nothing worse than negativity, mate. It spreads yeah. so quickly. And that's not me saying that I want everyone to do exactly what I'm asking. If there's any time where it's a warm up, because I was, I was the worst for it, mate. Aye. I used to, I used to think I was a great teammate, mate. See, when I look back Aye. now, it was the fucking worst. And that's why, and it, and it kills me, mate. In the sense of what, just in that negative space or just... Negative, most negative guy right. ever. And I, I thought I was kind of setting standards in terms of moaning, this is... Right. It's shite, mate. Go and do right. something about it, go and speak to the manager. I don't know if moaning in a fucking warm-up, this is shite. Because right. ultimately the fitness coach has been told what to do for the manager. Right. So I should have went and speak, spoke to the manager. I should have mm -hmm. been brave enough to go and fucking chat with the managers and say, listen, I don't think that's done right, that's done right. But 
I was negative. And I say Aye. that to the boys now. That's why I know, because it kills me. My playing career kills me. Aye. Not just in terms of the fact that I never reached the level that I thought I should have, but also how I was about the place. I used to think Aye. I was the best team in the world, mate, but when I look back now, I was fucking probably the worst. And it was probably the reason why teams that I played had never done as well as what the what they probably should have. But I thought because I was a laughing at a joke, I, that I was a big, oh, what a teammate, what a good guy to hear about. But ultimately, I wasn't, mate. I was rubbish, rubbish teammate. Do you think there was points that triggered that for you, though? Or do you think you always had that in Insecurities, you, mate. Really? Yeah, I, insecurities. Just from, like, your Celtic days or before that? Just or? in terms of me not being, thinking I wasn't good enough, mate. Eh? Aye. Uh, again, for the outside, probably people would have thought, oh, I was the most confident guy in the world. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a care in the world where it couldn't have been any further to the truth. I was going home at night and I couldn't sleep. Just thinking about how you thinking about uh, worrying about how I played Saturday, th worrying about the Saturday coming up, about what fans thought is. Um, and, and the reason that I had the worries is probably because I was so underprepared in terms of how I, I went Aye. about being a football player. Aye. I've had worked as hard as I possibly could, went to the gym, made sure my preparation was like, made, made sure I was eating properly. I wouldn't have had the worries at night. Aye. I've no doubt that the worries were because I knew that I was below what I should have been. Mm -hmm. And I would go on and act like a fucking clown to try and mask Aye. so that people couldn't go. See, if somebody did that to me, you're the most insecure guy in the world. I'd have crumbled, mate. The canny had done it. The canny had done it, mate. He's I seen right through us. He? He's seen the... right through me, mate. What, what triggered that conversation? Was it just, did he just pull you one day and say it to you? Tony Mowbray done it as well, mate. Tony Mowbray sent me on loan to Swindon. Tony Mowbray pulled me. I'll never forget it. We went to Australia pre season. Again, I'd have been a fucking nervous wreck, mate. Aye. The thought of having to go on and actually play and do well. Aye. But I'd mask that by running about, jumping about, at me, trying to make jokes in the dressing room. And we were playing, I think it was Melbourne, in the, in the dressing room. And he's like, ah, come here. And he went like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, what? He's like, why? Do you think you need to be, you need to be funny all the time? He's like, you need to be a football player, not a fucking comedian. He's like, you need to grow up. I'm going to send you. He says, after this trip, I'm going to send you on loan. You're going to go on loan at my mate's team in Swindon. And again, went to Swindon and... The guy, the great guy, Danny Wilson. Aye. He he liked the personality Aye. I had. He never, he didn't probably look into people as much as, but then the canio came in, mate, and just team first. Total U-turn. Uh, total U-turn. He's like, that's not who you are. He's like, you're a clever boy. He's like, why you won't act like that? He's like, you'll not, you'll not, you'll not end in your life if you continue to be that person. He's like, I can see you. Simon, Aye. come on, <laughs> uh. How do you take that, though? Because you'll get somebody like him sitting fucking... Things that you're probably thinking in your own head, but nobody's really said it, but he's sitting there giving you it both barrels. And that's why I had an answer that fucking off him, mate. Aye. Because he, Aye. He, he took an interest in you. He wanted Aye. to figure you as a person. And again, I done a talk at a fucking high school in um, Port Bridge. I thought I was doing it for, mate, I thought I was doing it for about 10 people. I turned up, it was a full assembly hall. <laughs> and I was like, you are joking me, man. And the, the teacher was like, I was like, what do you want to talk about? And he's like, just anything. Whatever. And I was like, fuck, man. So I'm sitting in the office. I'm like, what can I talk about? Like, how could I? And I try to put myself in their shoes. What would Aye. they want to hear? So, and it's and I've never actually thought about it at the time, mate. And I thought, what was I like at 16? And then Tommy Burns obviously sprung to mind. Aye. And I'm thinking about Tommy Burns was the best motivator you could ever get in your life, right? Aye. And it was the best thing for me, but also the worst, right? Because it led me in a place where I needed him to motivate me. I had no self motivation, right? So see, when guys like him left my life, I couldn't motivate myself because I relied on him oh, to do it so much because he was right, the best about. Okay. Aye. Whereas I always say guys like Bruni at Hibs, we used to play against Fletcher at Hibs. We used mm -hmm. to beat Hibs all the time, eh? But then the boys would come to say like, and be better than us. So how's that happened? Aye. Because they've never had a Tommy Burns that they relied on to uh, get them up for every game to tell them they're brilliant Aye. all the time. They had to find that within themselves. And when you hear that within yourselves, mate, that beats anything. Doesn't matter Aye. about ability. If you believe in yourself, and you're really motivated, you can do that yourself. I think that beats anything. I think that was the, but Tommy was the best and worst thing that happened to me. And because he was so good at what he was, did I he relied know on you were like that though? Did he know that you were relying on him for that kind of motivational point of view? Or do you think he noticed the difference when he wasn't he? Again, I probably wasn't like that. And then I fucked my ankle for two and a half years. Aye. So that was kind of, that was when Tommy died in between that period. Aye. So again, before my ankle, I, I probably was a different person, but when I'd done my ankle, I knew that I wasn't the same player. Right. I could tell that within myself. I never wanted to say to people, by the way, I'm not as good as what I was right. before this happened. And that way, when I'd done my ankle, that was probably when I needed him miss to build his back right. up, but he wasn't there when I got back to fitness. Right. And it hit me hard, mate. I've said it before. I was kind of lost after he... Such a void, isn't it? Uh, such a void, mate. Uh, such a void. And then obviously I find somebody like the Canio, and again, I was playing the best football in my career, mate. He made mm -hmm. his captain. 
18 months off uh, at the start, never played us for the, like, the first six, seven games. Aye. And then after that, I think I played the mess minutes under him, made his captain his last game. But then again, me being me, mate, because he was such a good motivator, he could, Aye. he knew what he, the right things to say to me to get Aye. me going. When Aye. he left me again, found it difficult to motivate myself. And before, you know, you just fucking go back down that way. So people I've had in my life have been brilliant, but again, after they kind of leave my life, I found it hard to, Aye. and that was when, Walking up for, I've said it before, I was walking up for a night shift and I was like, I thought about like, why is my life where it is now? And I thought back Aye. and I was like, I've relied on other people too much Aye. in terms of getting a success. And then I've also blamed other people when it, I used to blame Paul, I've said it before, I used Aye. to blame Paul Hartley, didn't they? Where, when you did well or when you did bad in life, it comes down to you Aye. ultimately. So uh, that was kind of, I forgot what the fucking question was, but. Uh, no, we're talking about the mindset thing, because obviously yeah, yeah. they can't always say that, but then with you being a manager now, how how do you feel your mindset is now? Because obviously you would have had to go away and be like, fuck's sake, that, that's a lightning bolt with somebody yeah, like yeah. that just hitting you with that. But do you feel your mindset's in a better place now? Oh, 100%. Then, then, would, it, would you think it's made the change never blame I never blame anybody for Aye. anything in my life, mate. Aye. I take full responsibility for everything good or bad that happens in my life. I never blame anybody else. Mm -hmm. I make sure I'm 100% prepared for everything that I do. Aye. Because ultimately, like I said to you, the reason why I never done well is I never, I never prepared well and then I blamed everyone else. So I, I think Aye. there are two massive things in your life. Mm -hmm. If you can prepare for whatever you're doing, I, I think you'll, if you can bring your own kind of personality. If you fail at that, then you can sleep Aye. at night. The reason I couldn't sleep at night, like I said to you, is because I, I knew that I probably wasn't doing it enough. So I try, I'm trying to get that into our boys now again. And that's what gives you such a buzz, which I love Aye. about managing and coaching is, try to, I'm, I'm now trying to get the good balance between trying to get them motivated, but then also putting it on, on them as well. Aye. So, so they're not relying on me to do it for the rest of their career, whereas they're trying to see that it's all done to me what I do. I can make myself either successful or I can make me. I always say to the boys, lads, Aye. whether we do well or we win it, I'll be done to use. It's not, That's I can it. only, it's done to use. So, uh, again, the big buzz you get is guys like a boy, Jamie Semple, who I love, plays for us, Semps. He's, uh, when he first came in to us, he was doing a, he was doing a 5K in 24 minutes. Saturday sends me a 5K time, 19 minutes, 33, and he's buzzing that he's done it under 20 minutes. So, Again, that's going on today with me, mate. Aye. That's him. Aye. And the buzz that he's getting for himself, then, is that, that's what gives me a real buzz. Aye. But it shows you that they're listening to you as well, because they're going away and they're going to try to improve themselves based on you. Look, okay, again, I don't know if it is based on me. I gave them the tools to kind of at the start, but I've, it's not like I'm on them all the time because I, I, I don't want them to be that way. I don't Aye. want it to be that I need to motivate you all the time. Aye. So I've said to them at the start, listen, lads, for the first kind of six weeks, I'm going to be on you. I'm going to try and get into you what, exactly what I want. After that, it's up to you. It's up to you to go and either take this on board Aye. or no. So user, user in control, you're in the uh, future, yeah. no me. So again, at the start, I had maybe, but you just see a completely different side to Sam's. It's him that pushes himself every mm -hmm. day. I say, oh, Sam's, I'm not going to shout you every time you come in here uh, because you rely on me to do it. So uh, he, he, he's got that within himself to go and push himself. But again, not just um, single on Sam's. So I've got, honestly, again, I've got such a great, great group of players. Uh, I could not ask for a better bunch. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, obviously, with the Broom Hill stuff. You're at Peterhead and you're, you're thinking Peterhead long term. What was your initial thought to the Broomhill job when it came in and the idea came in? Were you thinking, okay, I'm, I'm potentially leaving a brilliant gig here mm -hmm. to try something that's that's unknown? Uh, definitely, of course. I mean, as I say, I think I've been coaching at Peterhead for maybe 18 months, close to two years, and uh, we completely changed how we played for yeah. that. We kind of went for being met quite a direct team and we were like, well, why? If I'm gonna coach him, I want to coach and Jim mm -hmm. agreed. He he said we need to play. And I thought we're in a really good place. Like if I'd stayed there and we'd managed to keep the players that we'd had last year, obviously Aye. I think quite a lot's left now, but I'd have been looking to try and get in the playoffs this year. Aye. So it'd be like a slow gradual stay, try to stay up to consolidate in the league, then I go and try and try and get in the playoffs. Um but then obviously I just felt towards the end like I was starting starting to get frustrated on the side that it wasn't my voice that Aye. the players were here and ultimately Quite rightly, it's Jim's mm -hmm. voice that comes and he makes the decisions. Whereas I thought I'm I'm desperate now to go and fucking make decisions. Right. I think I, I think I know exactly how I want to play. I think I know how to coach how I want to play. Um, the only thing that's misses is obviously me making the final decision. So mm -hmm. Jim obviously wanted to stay on at Peterhead, which is fine because he obviously has done a great job there. So why would he leave? Um, and I'd have been happy to go and do another year of coaching. But when the open goal guys came and said we. Again, I was the, the first kind of plan was to get the football team and no me me not to be the manager. It'd be like right. a Salford thing, whereas I helped kind of pick aye, the manager. But aye. guys who opened goal, I think they came to watch us play Dundee in the Scottish Cup. Right. Andy Slaney and that came up, 
I think they were quite surprised with how we played against them, and, and and they were like, listen, we'd like open goal to play like that. Mm -hmm. That's how we want to play. We we think it would be a great. I think we, we think yeah, because you could obviously see. I'd come in on a podcast on a Monday and all I'd talk about was my, like, oh, this, that, aye, coaching. Aye. Uh, it's because it's what I think about 24-7. So I don't know if they've maybe heard that in, in the background and thought, fuck, he's ready to go and be a manager. So aye. they were like, we think you'd be, if, if this is going to happen, mm -hmm. I think it'd be even better if you went and managed it. So went and spoke to my missus and she was like, you're so frustrated at the fact that aye. you're not getting to make the decisions. Like the fact that, again, the open goal guys are, really good to me they're like everything's mm -hmm. up to you you make all the yeah, decisions yeah. football wise we obviously did a sponsorship market and revenue we're going to do a wee bit of footage and documentary which it doesn't bother me mix again yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll no change who i am yeah, yeah. if there's a camera there or no yeah, abs, yeah. i think you where you find me on a podcast people tell you where you find me in real life so mm -hmm. it didn't really bother me that in terms of that but it was just the fact that you got to, I, I was getting to start for a brand new a yeah, scratch yeah. you said get rid of who you want keep who you want bring in who you want obviously give you a budget stick Aye. within that budget um and i just thought for your first job why no man why not go and challenge yourself yeah. because i couldn't have been i would have been comfortable to stay in a gym for another year mm -hmm. or maybe two years and then take over for him with a comfortable squad that i had but just thought fuck it man let's go and take a take a wee risk and see mm -hmm. what happens so and did I, you enjoy the fact that you could go and mold the squad uh -huh. yourself rather than coming in and there's 30 bodies here and you've got to then chop and change and you can start building for people that you want with your personality and principles and what you see definitely so when, again that the thought of that that this is on me that right. this team will be 100 percent right. a reflection on me was a massive a massive pull for me because obviously there's people at peter head who jim have gave two year deals three year deals maybe i would not keep them about so right. if i get that job i'm not stuck with them because they're good mm -hmm. boys right. um but this was kind of everything that happens for the start for the goalkeeper right. down to the, the 20th man will be your decision so the thought of a team full of people that I want there was a mm. massive pull. Right. Um, not just in terms of players, but personality as well. So as right. soon as we kind soon as I kind of agreed, I sat and I wrote down every position, what I wanted for that position and what I want for a fullback, what I want for my goalkeeper, what I want. I then wrote down three or four names, done as much research, asking people about mm -hmm. the three or four as I could, meeting people. Um, and then that was a real when you when you get a connection with players yeah. and this is how I want to play, I think you'll be perfectly suited mm -hmm. and you can see them buying into it. And it's yeah. like Nah, this is brilliant. Like this is this is exactly what I've wanted. So mm -hmm. it went well, as I say. I couldn't. Uh, if we fail this year, I know I've said about the boys, but Aye. I'll be doing it, me mate, because they boys are mere. They they give me absolutely everything, mm -hmm. and they're they're so talented. So I know I put it on them, but ultimately, if, if, if we fail this year, it'll be doing it, me mate, Aye. because they 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 they're, they're excellent. Aye. And the connection is that as important to you as the playing side of things? Oh, one hundred percent, mate. That that I think. <sighs> Is it more important? No, it's not because I think a team who's a team who's well set up, a team who's got a structure, who's got an identity, I mm -hmm. think that's I think that's massive part of being successful in football. But the, the dressing room, I'd say it was maybe 55, 45 percent. Right. Right. Because ultimately you're seeing these people two, three times a week. You see, you see right. them there in your family in some right. instances. Some of your boys get in an hour early, they leave an hour later. So the, the, the amount of time that they spend with going on buses to away games and they were boys hanging about with each other. They're going quite a lot of probably fucking too many nights. I'm <laughs> totally honest with you, but they hang about with each other outside the football as well. So it's a massive part again that personality because I knew a big part of playing for us was going to be that media exposure, the criticism you're yeah. going to get. I need guys who are strong enough, mm -hmm. who have a strong enough personality to deal with that. So mm -hmm. that was a massive thing in me. Yeah, I explained it to them. Listen, lads, you're going to be putting on a lot of scrutiny for a low end league team. It's not mm -hmm. going to be like any other lower lower right. league team that you played for. You're going to you're going to get a lot of criticism. There's going to be a lot of people that want to see you fail. Mm -hmm. Are you are you ready to accept that challenge? Again, that's why I've got so much yeah. so much time for them and I appreciate them so much is because they have put themselves in there. And right. It could have been easy to go and kind of play under no pressure and enjoy your football. Whereas here, we're getting beat, mate. And if they, which, which players do, because I used to do right. it myself. If you click on Twitter when we've been getting beaten the full-time right. result, mate, you've got Hannah Messi saying, right. fuck, like, get it up, them right. buzzing. But I, I say it, the boys are trying to embrace it. You know what I mean? It's great. Uh, you're putting yourself out there. You're brave. No, you'll get the rewards if you. I always think if you're brave, you get the rewards. So, boys are starting to. You see, again, you started to see maybe a start when we got beaten. That you could see them coming in Tuesday, and they were a wee bit. They've obviously read stuff, but now it's right. like, don't give a fuck, man. It's can. It's typical in Scotland, isn't it? They just want to bring you down if you're if you're doing something different or you're. But again, it's you're out there. It's fine, mate. Isn't it? It's Aye. fine. It's like if, no, if, I'm not expecting everyone to want to no. love us and want us. No. I understand that people like certain Aye. things in life and they done it, and Aye. that's fine. That's just. That's just the way life is. I don't think it's right. Scotland, I think England's the exact same. And, but 
it's good. Do you know what I mean? If you're if, you, if everyone loves you, mate, you're not doing it. You're not doing. No. You're not doing it right. Do you know what I mean? 100%. So. Does but it, as I say, the boys have been excellent. How they've kind of responded to it. Does it bother you when, no so much criticism comes because it's, it comes with the job as a manager, but when people question how serious you are as a coach and look at you and not go and think, oh, that's just you. That's you stereotyped. Uh-huh. Is that whereas you've been doing coaching? It's not as if you've just fell into a job and you're learning as you go, but does it annoy when people question that seriousness side of you? Again, probably. I remember when it, it was maybe a period of open goal where me and Slaney would constantly message each other. There was like a fucking comment on Twitter like, right. oh, look, that, so that, he's saying that, he's saying that. Whereas generally now, mate, Aye. past that, eh, like, Understand again, like I've just said to you, I've just came to an understanding that no everyone's gonna right. like you. Right. It's like anyone in life, right. anyone that puts it, you'll be the same. If you like your podcast, people right. fucking hate it. You just, right. just need to understand that again, all I kind of the opinions that I go on me are people that I respect and that people I know tell me the truth. Mm-hmm. But if I'm if they think that so again, like like Tomo, oh, I'll say to Tomo when I first took this job, like Danny would be different on the podcast and that and he's like, mm-hmm. nah, be yourself, man. That's you, right. that's who you are. Just be true to yourself, do it, do it the way you want to do it. And mm-hmm. if you fail day being yourself, as long as you prepare properly, as long as you give it your absolute everything, then like I say, you'll be able to sleep at night, mate. No, but I try and no, listen, I say to the boys as well, listen, we, we done a years, again, if I'd got this job two years ago, I'd have been like that to the boys, I've never doubt me, I'd have been addressed like that. Everyone wants us to fail, lads, let's prove them, See, man. Like, but now I'm like, lads, we don't need other people's opinions Aye. to make us want to be successful. We want to be successful because it's what, it's what, what what we want to get right. out of life. And that's how I try to look at it to the and mm-hmm. try to sell it to the boys. Whereas I even say to them, see, good and good, good, they're, they're not listening to good stuff either. Right. Again, they, they, they right. didn't know what, the only opinion that matters is what goes on in here. Right. Because we know each other, we know who we are. They didn't know you. They didn't mm-hmm. know you as boys, they didn't know you as players. Mm-hmm. I know you inside out, you know me. As long as we're always honest with each other right. or, and we can accept criticism for each other, we can accept praise for each other without getting too high, too low, right. then that's all that matters. So that's how we try to, mm-hmm. try to kind of block outside noise out. Best way to be. What about, did you speak to many managers before you took the job or did you just think, oh, I'm going to do it my way? Uh, no, I did. I spoke to a lot of managers, mate. I did. I, did. I spoke to, I, I, I never think you could stop, I'm fucking done. I say it on the, on the document all the time, I'm, I make mistakes, I'm a new manager. Aye. I try to learn for as many people as I, as I possibly can, mate. Mm. I, I can imagine when I'm 60, I'll still be asking to go and Aye. watch people's sessions and learn and see if I can pick things up. So no, I spoke to a lot of managers, guys that I respect and, just how, I, no, not in terms of what should I do, what should I do. I just asked them how they right. went about their day to day business, right. how they reacted in certain situations with players mm. and t- in terms of what they did in training with part time teams. Could, is there any way I could do it? Because we only trained one night at Peterhead. Right. So I had to get a good balance between what did I do on a Tuesday night, what did I do on a Thursday night. So I went and spoke to kind of managers that had done it. Tom, obviously, like Kelly, went and mm. watched him train. How he was with players in terms of, because obviously I was just a coach, so right. as a manager, do you speak to them all the time? Do you ask them how they've been at work? Do you pull mm. them in, make sure everything's Aye. all right? Or do you kind of leave them, give them their space? So never took everything that Tomo said and said, Aye. I'm right, I'm going to do it the way Tomo does it. But then also things that I like that he said, I would maybe wouldn't do it that way. So mm-hmm. Darren McKinnon's another one that I've asked a lot. James McPeak, Jim McAnally. Again, I probably spoke to Jim Mayer mm-hmm. when I'd left and first started this job. Right. I was on the phone to him constantly about certain situations that had happened, speaking to the press. Aye. How do I go about this in terms of talking about expectations for the season? Aye. Did I want to disrespect other managers? Did I want to disrespect other teams? So he was brilliant as well. So, mate, honestly, I try and speak to him, try and get advice Aye. off as many people as, as I can. Know that I take every single word as fucking gospel, mm-hmm. but I try and, again, Fozzie, my mate Fozzie's down at Huddersfield now. I spoke to him last night. He's... Oh God, he started, he got a win and then a draw and then they got beat. So I spoke to him about going down to watch him because I've watched wee bits that he does in the training ground and I, I love his enthusiasm. So I know I can go and learn off him because he right. sees football similar similar ways that I do. So I always try to learn, mm-hmm. mate. Again, my Ange, that was a big, massive... Yeah. Speaking to Ange is like... Uh, it makes you think completely different about Aye. football. He is one that you think, fuck, he's right, man. Aye. And basically everything he says, but then you look at me, look at the experience he's had. Of course, he knows yeah. the game inside out. He's managed at World Cups, and and he, he I like to play the same kind of no style because obviously they're my, he's miles better. Aye. But attacking football, and, so that, that, that that's a great advantage that I've mm. got. The fact that you get to sit with an Ange post and you get to pick his brain for forty five minutes on the camera. I fucking as soon as he walks in the room, mate, and we've got fifteen minutes before him. Aye. I'm asking him <laughs> a million questions before that podcast. But that is that fifteen begins. minutes is invaluable. Invaluable, isn't it? mate. So I t- anyone that I mean, it might not even be football, mate, just people who manage 
Mm. Other people. So I've got right. a mate again, Jim Kearney, you'll probably watch this because he watches a lot. He's his boy and my boy are pals. He's like a business like an entrepreneur kind of type mm. guy. So ask him a lot of questions. Eh? Even guys like Mick Kennedy, who's at Darvel. I don't know if you know Mick, because Mick's been Mike. doing it a long time. I like Mick. I like the way he is as a guy and, and how he is with his players. Um I asked Mick. Mm. I asked Mick his advice quite a lot. Right. Um so I uh, not just football, like everyday life, people who are uh, people who are in charge of other people. Mm -hmm. Not in charge, sorry, that's the wrong word to use, but people who are kinda what's the word? Just managing managing people. people. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I try and get as much again, I listen to podcasts where I, I read Eddie Jones's book in the summer. Aye. The England rugby coach, mm -hmm. fucking brilliant, man. The amount of things that I took for that, mate. Aye. So Always learning. Just try to learn as much as I possibly can, as yeah. quickly as I possibly can, to kind of be the best, best version that you can be, mate. Definitely. What about, what have you found the biggest differences for being a coach to being a manager? Nah, so you're a bit, a coach, you, you turn up, you put a session on for their tours, you try and get as much information as you can. You go up road, you don't hear for players again. Right. Whereas when you're the manager, mate, it's, that I genuinely, when I say there's something that comes up every day. Right. Whether it's a player, whether it's a physio, whether it's your goalie coach, you've got a problem, your fitness coach, whether it's the board, there's always something mate, right. that you, you're never a day where you're phone, you're not having to solve a problem, right. problem basically. So, but it's good, mate. I enjoy it. I, I like taking on that responsibility. Right. I want to help people. I want mm -hmm. people. I always say again. I say to the staff, if there's any frustrations that you've got at any time, then I build it up, and it's the worst right. thing that can happen. Right. Come and tell me straight away. No matter how small you think it is, mm -hmm. phone is, talk to us. Uh, I want to help. I want to be there. Aye. So that kind of extra where you're in charge of everyone, mate. Again, Aye. people look at it and think a manager, you're in charge of 18 players and you go and put a session on it. It's no, mate. There's Aye. so much more outside of that. Again, see, even then, like we were going through a really tough patch and I was fucking low then, mate. And Tito having to go on and do the podcast on a Monday, mate. Aye. But I think you could yeah, tell on the podcast. I fucking slap myself, mate. I think you could tell on the podcast that you were feeling it at that point. Because you can obviously, if you lose something, you're fucking. I date with, but well, I'm a Rangers fan. It's every fucking second week now or you something. You must be miserable all the time. Mate, honestly. <laughs> um, but you must feel it more because you're then having to go in and kid on everything's all right <laughs> and just talk about other stuff. <laughs> it's, not that, it's, not, it's not so much the kid on, it's getting that enthusiasm. We're going Because we, we made a point of, we'll talk a wee bit about the game at the start of the Aye. podcast, just so kind of, because we've done it at Peterhead as well. I date with Andy, how'd you get on at the weekend? So... It's trying to get that enthusiasm to talk about getting beat for right. nothing because if you see if you start up, you know, you still see if you start a podcast flat, you're like that for this like, fucking hell. So you need to start kind of enthusiastic. So fucking beat for nothing at the weekend, brilliant, man. Uh, so that's tough, mate. But, and then even the, but I say to the boys, and the boys have, have been great, Kev, Andy, even Selena, who's my coach. I was like, didn't give me an easy ride, man. Mm -hmm. So see if you're getting beat, because I didn't, I've, I've managers are doing well on your podcast. Aye. We criticize them. So I was like, if I come on the podcast and we've been beat, then I say like, oh, it's dinner worry, it'll turn around. Criticize right. is anything I've done. So but I think we got beat for Glen Office, still in Union and Glen Office and uh succession and Kev was like, basically, mate, you're the worst fucking manager of all time. <laughs> and I was like, fucking right. <laughs> so you need you just need to accept it. That's where the boys have been really good. Again, there's been times where we've no played maybe played well or or one and the boys have been completely honest, which I wanted them to do because I, 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 that's part of being a manager. You need to right. you need to be able to accept criticism. Right. So because we're winning, it's back to being all right again. But again, right. even with the podcast, so mate, I'm sitting on a podcast and I'm thinking about fucking my team. Right, and what's going on? Constant, which is right. not a great thing. But hopefully, once it settles down, and I can kind of balance right. it to to again. But it must be good as well that you've got the experience there. You've got Dell there. You've got brothers there. You've got people there who have been the course and done. So much like he played now UEFA Cup final, uh -huh. and he still get that enthusiasm to go and look after his cell and play. And he, for that documentary, they look fully bought in uh -huh. as well. And as much as you've got the young guys that have got the passion, it must be good for you to have the experience. It feels that way as well. Brilliant, mate. So again, it's like no, brother's got an unbelievable mindset, mate. Mm -hmm. Like unbelievable. He um he's totally dedicated to what right. he does. But just the fact that you could tell that he. If I had said to brother, brother's obviously defended deep, he's kick, no kick the ball, but I didn't ask him to do it, he doesn't, right. which it gives me a massive confidence, right. the fact that Kurt Broadfoot has got the, because again, if you thought I was a clown mate, I'd need that, not just because it's him, but anyone that kind of played it, would be like, ah, this guy, man, fuck, right. I'm just going to do my thing, but he mm -hmm. hasn't, uh, we were conceding too many goals at the start of the season, I'm not going to give him a fucking tactic, it's right. what we've changed, but I was like, I, I speak to my time, we send them the videos, what do you think, what do you think? And I was like, I think we need to do this better, I think we need to change this and that. He's like, right, fine, let's, let's fucking get a bash. Right. I'll do it if I need to change how I'm playing. 
I'll change, which mm. is amazing, mate. Eh? Aye. Because, like I say, it would have been so easy, 37 playing the UEFA Cup final, drop him down to low and like to come and do whatever he's like, but he's not, mate. He's, he's been great and he's trying to pass my message on to the players on the pitch in a, in a right way. Again, mm -hmm. maybe at the start, there was a frustration with, with Brothers because obviously he's played at a better level. Aye. So you could see maybe the way he's speaking to boys, but again, you just, if you're, I think if you're honest with guys like Brothers, you, you respect you. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, your information's good, but we didn't need a wee dick in that. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's like, no, right, I completely understand. So we gave him the coaching, always done a wee bit of coaching. I think that's helped as well. Right. Kind of understanding that they're good boys, they want to do well, they mm -hmm. will make mistakes. Mm -hmm. If we criticise them, they'll go into their shell, they'll make more mistakes. Right. If we speak to them in the proper right. way, their mistakes will get less and less because mm -hmm. we'll give them confidence that we think you're a good player. Right. Nothing better for a player playing right back and Kirk Broadfoot's right centre back and you think, he thinks I'm a fucking good player. Right. You'd be amazed. Aye. I could do the coaching sessions the world, but that probably did more for that boy than my, than me coaching him on year Just to the fact that Broders thinks he's a good player, so that's he's been great at that now. Mm -hmm. In terms of how he speaks to the boys, the information he's given them, um, and the way he's given it. So honestly, I could not ask any more for him the way he's came in and been. But again, my older other older players, Alan Cook, who was came in with I thought of being a fucking roving left winger, and I put him at centre back, <laughs> and he's been unbelievable. Aye. And again, Cookie was the same because I had Cookie at Peter Head, and he's one of these guys who's fucking desperate to win. He's aggressive. Mm -hmm. He says what he thinks, which I love about him. And again, I had to pull him and say, Cookie, I, I like I like how much you want to win and how much you want to push the boys on. But remember, these boys are different. Right. We're playing in the own league. You need to speak mm -hmm. to them in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And again, he took time to think, right, okay, uh, but I fucking, this is just, I think they need to be told. I was like, no, it's fine. That's Aye. my job to think. Aye. I know what you're saying. Aye. I know you just are reacting, but we need, we, need to, we need to change who, not change who we are, but we need to change our approach a wee bit here. Mm -hmm. Because... These boys have not been criticised like that right. before for players that have played at your level. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They've always played right. with like a low league team who have never had a Kirk Broadfoot in right. it. So what you say to them, you'll be amazed at how much it kind of right. sticks with them. So they've been, Gaz Fraser, the same. Gaz, who's my captain, played with us on the Premier League. He's been, how they've been with the boys. I, I always say being a good guy is such a, a massive part right. of being successful. And they, they, I think your older pros, if you're going to bring older pros in, they mm -hmm. need to be good guys. And and, I, and Brian Conroy is the same who I've known since I was 11 year old. I know that he's he, he's just that way anyway. He, mm -hmm. He's just a lovely, no, the same other boys are not lovely Aye. guys, but Conroy, because he's worked with me for two years, he gets what I want. So my older players have, mm -hmm. the younger players have performed unbelievably well, but I've no doubt it's because of how the older boys have acted. Right. Were you surprised you got Broadfoot? Ah, uh, like, fuck, of course. <laughs> I, I remember driving down to Darling thinking, I've, I've just wasted fucking £10 in petrol, man. <laughs> um, but I just, I was just honest with him. Again, I told him exactly how we were going to play. So right. I knew that he hadn't played like that, for especially when he was at Inverness. I don't mm -hmm. think they were as kind of high up the pitches as we were. Uh, so I explained every time I, I basically gave him a full rundown of how I train, how I work, how we're going to play on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously the fact that he's going to, it was going to be a club podcast, which right. would give him that wee bit of media side. Mm -hmm. And then a bit of coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that appealed to him. Obviously, I try to sell it to you. You could go to a championship club for a year on. Right. You could come here and this could be your career for the next four or five years. Right. Um, so I think he liked that. Um, but it took a lot of, it took a lot of work, mate, which is mm -hmm. understandable because he was at Inverness last year. He played right. 45 games in the championship. Right. Um, and they got to the, they were one game away from getting to the Premier League. You know what I mean? So... Which tells you you're on the right track as well, though, because you've, you've got folk like that buying in. Uh, that gives you a lot of vision. confidence, mate. It does. I'll be totally honest. It does. The fact that guys like him kind of see where you're going and what you're trying to do and, and are quite keen to do it, then that gives you massive confidence. Mm -hmm. But then you've also got to go and fucking... You've also got to go and do what you've Aye. promised. So Aye. that's a big challenge. And it does... It, be totally honest, mate. It makes you easier in terms of playing, but it makes it harder mm -hmm. to think... This guy's played under the best manager in the world. He'll, if I'm no fucking at it here, he'll see through me straight Aye. away. Aye. But I like that pressure, mate. I want that pressure. As I say, Aye. I don't want an easy life where I'm just coming in and boys are nodding their head at your every word. Brothers disagrees with me at times. We had discussions and then we come up with the best out outcome for the team, mm -hmm. which I want. I want. I always say, if you're not happy with anything, come and tell Aye. us. Even if it's me, someone I'm doing, Aye. things that I'm saying you don't think is right, come and talk to me. I'll tell you why I'm doing it and then we can mm -hmm. have a discussion about it. Um, so you've been great in terms of that because the last thing I wanted was people that are going to come in and just nod their heads and agree at every night. It's not going to help you. No, is it? Fuck, it's not going to help no, me get any better. Help so, you. as I say, that Dell's the same. Dell's been great. Dell's enthusiasm for football is unbelievable. Mate. It's a great example of young boys. When I need to when I need them to dip in and out of training, the way he trains at forty one, mate, he Aye. trains like he's fucking nineteen year old. Aye. The demands he put again. Give me the boy, he wants the boy, the time, which is 
is what I want your players to be like. I want everyone to want the ball. It's players. infectious, isn't it? It's infectious, mate. Infe- I always say to the boys, be infectious. Aye. We can get 11 infectious players with the talent that they've got and the hard work and the way we can run then. It'd be, it'd be very hard for us not to fail. You know, it'd be very hard 100%. for us to fail, mate. So I've got a great team around us and it's a great, I think I've got a great mix between younger guys and, and uh, young, uh, younger guys and older guys. So I'm, I'm really good, as I said, mm-hmm. the squad that I've put together, I'm, it's all down to me now, basically. Aye. What about the coaching side of it? Because obviously you've got Slaney there as well and I'm I'm sure you would have expected the shite to come your way when you announced nah. that and the whole kind of pal thing, but how's that relationship? Because it must be different for when it is generally with the both of you in that environment. Nah. No, it's... Um, so what, what was the... Sorry, what was the question? So do you, do you find that... Do you think he's settled in well as a coach? Because he's probably getting more pressure in the sense of everybody thinks he just dicks about and uh-huh. what, what's he going to bring to this team this is a pals act but how have you found it for actually having him there and seeing what he does he's been great mate honestly Aye. he's been great again he's a and this is this this does him a disservice is why i didn't really want to say it first but first and foremost the boys absolutely love him Aye. and then i just love him because he's a joke he jokes about Aye. they love him because the confidence he gives them mm-hmm. again I, I i don't go in the dressing room so I, but other people tell me I, again, speak to my captain and boys about the dressing room. What do you think of this? That Slaney's in there telling them how good that, and that's what mm-hmm. a coach's job is. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm a psychopath, mate, when it comes to football. So I, I coach everything <laughs> there because I've got a clear way that I Aye. want to play. I've got a clear way that I want people to train, how mm-hmm. I, how they train within that drill, what I want for them in that drill. Mm-hmm. Because it's still early doors, mate. I'm doing a lot of that. Aye. But I didn't want coaches to come in and coach in terms of putting on fold because I love that that's what I love I right. love doing that that's the kind of manager that I am hands on what I needed was guys who when I'm going off my fucking nut the boys will put an arm around them right. obviously I'll do that as well but like if we get beat on a nobody better if we get beat and we're coming on the Monday mm. I try to be as positive as I can but mm. Slain is really good at it mate. Right. he's really good at it and then in terms of his experiences so if he sees someone right. within a player he'll go and talk to them and say listen mm. I can see that I used to do that right they, they don't be like that be like this Aye. so he's good mate mm-hmm. again that's a coach for me Aye. another thing that he does really well and again probably would, people would never ever think about this about him I sit in my office I'll usually plan my session in the afternoon I'll then sit in the office I'll pull a couple of players in and speak about certain things that happened in the weekend and before that happened sorry Slane will come in this is what we're doing tonight this is what we're doing tonight I'll walk out to the training pitch mate he's got the small goals built he's got the cones set up ready Aye, for prepped. the bibs put it Aye. and that's brilliant mate that's, mm-hmm. uh, that, that for me is what I uh, a good coach is somebody that's an, an, an enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. His enthusiasm through the roof. Um, but then on the other side, he watches every game. So I put the game, the, the game into the boys. He'll watch every game, and then he'll message me. I thought we'd done this well. I thought we'd done that well. I thought we could have done that better as mm-hmm. well. So again, people probably look at and think, "Oh, he's brilliant." Again, that's why I didn't want to say first thing. He's brilliant with the boys. Aye. Aye. That's the type of person he is. But he's so much more than that, mate. And he's uh he's doing really well he's Aye. doing really well and people don't see that side yet no exactly it's a difficulty but it's the same with podcasts mate i think people probably think that Slaney just turns up and fucking has a laugh but Aye. when we did the hydro mate doesn't every day when we're rehearsing again today we're rehearsing again today when we're rehearsing Aye. next can we go through this again he, he works hard mate eh? he's Aye. a hard worker he's a grafter Aye. like i say he's brought this energy drink now he's got a coaching school that he'll, he, he'll not sit on his ass today. he'll no. be he'll be he'll be working non-stop mm-hmm. He wants to be successful, mate. He's ambitious, and I want people who are similar to myself, ambitious, right. that want to work hard, that want to give their absolute everything. Um, of course, he's going to make mistakes, similar right. to myself. But what I think is a big, massive thing for us as well. We're all we're all more than happy to admit when we've made a mistake. Mm-hmm. I used to play in the managers, mate, and they would never ever put their hands up and say, "Listen, lads, I've got that wrong here." Whereas I say to the players, "You're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes." Right. See, as long as we hold our hands up, and go, "I've made a mistake now. How do I get better for it?" Fine, but that probably breeds that. And you were talking about negativity earlier. If you're sitting with a manager and they're doubling down and no admitting it, and that's more likely when players will start getting away and going, fucking, he's at it. Uh-huh, it just blames us for everything. Aye, and uh-huh. it just then starts to build that kind of... Because you've probably seen it. You've been in dressing rooms and you've got wee cliques and you can see it all just unfolding. And that's what I love about our place, Gary. Is honestly, again, I don't go in the dressing room, but I, t- I try and watch everything. Mate. If you see when they're out, I watch who kicks the ball out with each other before training. Aye. There's no cliques, mate. Aye. It's like it changes every week. So one week it'll be Brock, Semps, and maybe Jacob, and then the, the next night it'll be Jacob, Evan, and somebody else. Aye. So they're all there's no cliques, man. I, mm-hmm. I, I once you get cliques in a dressing room, mate, it's fucked. Aye. 
Um, again, that's where you try to say like any sort of negativity. Come at me, right. dinner, dinner, speak about right. each other, dinner, come and tell mm -hmm. me, and we'll get it, we'll solve it together. So, do but, players use that? Do you have players ah. be in kind of had they conversations if they're not happy about something? Or so I'll try and not try and talk to them. But every so often, I'll if I, if I felt like I've not spoke to him for a while, or I'll just bring him in the office every night, right. and then we can, you know, we could do better, or I'll phone them because it's part time, mate. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're at setting up, then you put the session on, and the boys are desperate to get away because we train eight right. to ten, so showered in a way so sometimes it's a phone call Aye. I've been all right Aye. anything you think we could do better mm -hmm. um but yeah, the boys are honest it's like Semps again who I talk about uh playtime centre mid against hearts um I was like you what you fine playing there he's like I have fine playing there uh played there at Motherwell and then the next day but I think we drew and the next day for me he's like uh didn't like playing there <laughs> Uh, he says I remembered that, but I love that mate. Yeah, I love that he's got it honestly because I've maybe you didn't play them in the next game. He doesn't enjoy it again. Adam is another great example. We uh, were doing set pieces one Friday, uh, Friday night before a game. I uh, sorry Thursday night before a game on a Friday, and uh, I said Evan, go and you hit the corner for the right hand side, and I could see in his face, and I went, you don't feel comfortable hitting a corner, and he's like, ah, nah. I was Aye. like, right, brilliant. Come on, Matty, go and you do it, Matty. You alright doing it? Yeah. I like Aye. that honesty, mate. Aye. Nothing works seeing a football player and you're, you're uncomfortable. You feel nervous about it. affects the rest Aye. of your game. I remember the canoe used to put me on Swindon, uh, corners at Swindon, mate, right? And I fucking hated hitting corners. I was shite at it. <laughs> I don't know why he put me on them, right? And the full game, mate, I, I, you think I'm talking shite? The full game, I'd be thinking, I hope he didn't get a corner, man. So I couldn't even fucking concentrate on the main game because I was worried about us getting a corner. Did you ever say to him? No? Did you ever? No, nah, because I was too scared to, mate. Aye. And I hated that, mate, because it affected, the, it affected the rest of my game. Aye. I'd be cheering when we fought the ball went for a goal kick. See when the fucking <laughs> your winger went to cross in and hit the defender came back and hit him. I'd be like, oh, thank fuck, man. I was that bad at corners, mate. Once we were uh, playing Torquay on Boxing Day and I'd fucked cor about three corners up the road at half time. He's like, next time you get a corner, just kick it out for a goal kick. And So he was wanting me to put the ball in the corner spot, <laughs> kick it out for a goal kick and just get back in. He says, we're safer. We're safer if you just kick it out for a goal kick. I was like, why? Why you keep putting me on these? <laughs> I don't know if it was like he enjoyed the physical torture of watching me fucking sweat when we got a corner. See, maybe he was about to see if you'd actually go to him and say that. I don't want to uh, risk it. Or maybe thinking that I'd maybe get better at him, but see hitting corners, mate. You play football? Aye, when I was younger, but I, it's that. See, when you're describing that there, see, when you were younger, you're like, this better hit the fucking actual box. So and I throw this in, or it goes way over, and everybody just looks at you and you're like, No, but this guy was a psycho, mate. So this guy <laughs> would say to you, he'd stand in a certain area with a ball there, and he'd go, I want you to hit the ball here. <laughs> mate, mate, I'm a league one football player for a reason. I can't just put the ball where you want it. I'm fucking floating this in an area, and if it goes, if it goes where you want it, then, then I've won the lottery. But there's no way I'm good enough to hit a certain fucking. Gary McAllister was the only person I've seen that can actually. Zinger bought the, remember Gary McAllister Aye. was around there Aye. you ever see him at a corner he would just oh, kind of lace it to the front post but he would ask me to do shit like that I'm like I can't do that but again I was too scared to go gaffer I can't do that because he'd be like what would he have just kicked off let's see if you went back and went like, he would not understood that mate Aye. he would not understood that because he's a top player wasn't he Aye. he could put a bot he could put a bot anywhere mate that's probably worse so see if you're a manager at that level and you're trying to show players and you can do it, you must be sitting going, fuck's sake. Yeah, I, I can do this than 40 odds. Uh, I hate, I, I, he used to do that quite a bit and I hated it, mate. I've learned, right. a, I learned a lot from him, but also like terms of that, of not being, you kind of say that I don't want to do this or I can't do this. Aye. He, uh, again, he was one of them, no, look, that, do it like this. And I'm like, I know, but I'm not you. Do you, do you understand? Aye. Like, I can't do that. <laughs> but so I would never, ever, ever do that to boys. But boys are probably better players than I was, the boys that we've got, but I would, I've made a, Never ever push a player out the way and say, Day like this. That's no Aye. coaching, mate. Aye. That's no coaching. That's you showing how good a football player you are. Aye. That's not your job. The co show them or explain to them this is maybe how you can Aye. do it this way or Aye. can you receive it differently to make it easier for you. That's what coaching is. It's not just saying move it the way and I'll fucking show you how to do it. But it's weird though that you, that relationship was like that with him, but you would have done anything for him. Yeah. <sighs> Whereas you'd get some players that'd be like, oh, fuck this, man. I can't be, I can't be dealing with him. But it was an element of fear when we were filming where you, you feared him, man. Was that across like, the squad? Nah. Just like I can... Uh, it was, mate. Well, um, maybe two or three that would say, I'm not scared of him, but then when it actually came down, mate, everyone would shit themselves for him. Uh, uh, I suppose, but if you're sitting there and he's gone full... Scary, mate. Aye. I'm talking there for you. <laughs> aye. There, mate. Oh, they crumbled. To me, it was just... Do you know what? It wasn't even that. It was like how you could tell how much it, 
how much it meant to him. Aye. I've told Aye. I told this story. I don't know if you can put this out, but because again, he used to say to me about uh, corners and set pieces, and he would uh, he say, you know, we used to do clips on the next day after the game, mm -hmm. and uh, he would go, um, okay, now we watch Simon hit corners in, and uh, so he hit the corner and and, and he'd go. And then it's going on. And then one day he was like, Simon, you think that you, you he said, what was it? He said, he said, uh, for you, this is just set pieces. This is just corner kicks. He says, for me, when we work on something that I've came up with and we score, I go home, I take a big fucking wonk. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that's how he explained it, how much Wait, it meant you to him. You when you're sitting there? Just pissed yourself up. He's like, no, please don't laugh. It's not, it's not meant to be funny. But again, but that's, but, and that's why, because you, he wasn't just a guy who was like, fucking do this, do that. And, and you could tell how much he, uh, he cared, mate. It was all in. It was all in. And uh, again, the thing I loved about him is uh, maybe the wrong example of date like this. In terms of, uh, we used to run a lot, mate, mm -hmm. and the boys would hate it. But what I loved about him, mate, is he would join in every run. So he's doing everything he's, he's doing asking. Well. If I can right. do it at 40 right. fucking five, right. you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can do it. He was the fittest guy in the world, mate. Again, even stuff like me, I was overweight at the start. He hated me. I think I jumped on the scale. We got weighed the first day. I jumped on this. I came back for American, mate. Because I hadn't been playing the year before, so I'd fucking gone, mate. Like, I was like, <laughs> fuck fit, boy. I'm going to be a post day. going to be a joiner, my mate. This will be my last year, and I'm fucking off. I'm going to hit the best summer. How I'm much like, were you overweight, like your usual kind of playing weight? I'm talking 10 kilo. Fuck. 82 kilo! <laughs> First day I walked on, I think two rappers fell out my pocket when I was jumping on the scales. And uh, his face, mate, he was like, what is this? What is this? So I was at uh, lunch, he picked my picked my lunch for us, eat that, See? went to Italy. I was the only person that wasn't allowed to eat dessert. <laughs> Every morning, this is what, again, what I loved about him. He's like, I care about you. He's like, you play league, what, you play league two for a reason because of this, the condition mm -hmm. you're in, you're a good player. He's like, we get up in the morning and we go for a run. After training, me and you, we, and I love that about aye, him, mate. Aye. So me and him, sometimes he's like, <laughs> no, just to run, mate, but he would not stop talking, mate. Aye. He'd just done a tour session, a tough session. He's like, come on, fat, he used to call me fat boy. Come on, fat boy, we go for a run. But again, then when, when you get the weight down, comes up, grabs your cheekbone. He's like, look how beautiful you are now. No more fat, no more fat face. <laughs> so he, he, he had a great balance, mate, aye. similar to Tommy Burns. Aye. Again, people think Tommy Burns, was the opposite, and Tommy Burns was just a laugh and a joke. Tommy uh, Burns was the most ruthless guy you've ever met in your life, mate. And you'd never think that. Never think it. But see what goes on behind, mate. Uh, see if you didn't meet his demands and his standards, mate. I've had Tommy Burns in there, mate. There in my face. Was that hard in the sense of when you're going to say, like, you obviously have Tommy Burns pictured a different way, and then you see that side and you're like, fucking hell. The big thing for you with Tommy Burns is we were like the best fucking youth team of all time. Aye. Uh, we, we, we like my team that we had, we'd never lose a game. So when you were in a full time, so mm -hmm. we were, I was coming down for Dundee at the weekend. Aye. I'd only see Tom at the weekends. We were one every week, so it was buzzing. It was fucking brilliant. brilliant. And then you come for that thinking, I can't wait to work with Tom every day. <laughs> see if you come in, mate, you're in the room properly, Monday to Friday. Aye. You walked in the dressing room for an hour and he's fucking telling you, this is not acceptable here. Might have been Stand a laugh and a joke that. when you're a wee boy, you're not a wee boy anymore. Aye. You're a man, ready to play in Celtics first team. This is what you fucking demand. And if you can't do it, you'll not be here. Doesn't matter what you've done under 12, 13, how good you were then. This is a fucking man's world. Now, you're not playing against boys your own age now. You're trying to get Aye. there. You're trying to beat, you're trying to get ahead of fucking Paul Lambert. Aye. And if you want to carry on every day, you'll never get there. He was un, he had a great, great balance, mate, Aye. of. That like, you feared Tommy, mate. Aye. Loved Aye. him a bit, but you feared him, mate. See, when he walked, you'd always come, I don't know if you made a point of doing it. Training was start, mate, and went through the motions, but you're obviously working hard, and then, mate, you'd see him walking down the hill, and it would be like a fucking Aye, turn into a world cup final, mate. Aye. But then he had that great side to you where I remember Big Dermo, who's the assistant manager, uh, said, Mum, Dermo always used to control the ball with the outside of his fit, and Tommy used to fucking <laughs> stop controlling the ball with the outside of your fit. <laughs> so we were, playing a, we were playing a game one day, and uh, I can't remember who we were playing, but Dermo was going, hadn't been back to Ireland, because again, right. like, Tommy was like a workaholic, mate, he ran Aye. every day. Aye. He would, he, he, he would train us in the morning. Maybe do a bit with the first, or train with the first team in the morning, or come down and join in with two, and then come out with us in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then, mate, he'd be under 13s training at 10 o'clock at night. He'd be there a full day, mate. Full workaholic. day. Workaholic. Um, 
and you'd have a seven in every day, mate. It's like, it's no fucking holiday camp. You're here to get better. Aye. So, uh, Dermo, the boys came, used to come over to the island, Darno Day, Dermo, Gary Walsh, and Big Gareth. And uh, we had Derm this is Dermo's first time going him since he'd signed. So right. maybe even four months. He right. had been him four or five months just before Christmas. We were playing in a game. And he's controlled the ball outside his foot. And Tommy's, Tommy used to stand at the corner on his in. Right. He'd hear him from the, the corner. Stop controlling the ball outside your foot, man. We used to speak like that. <laughs> Pass the ball properly, man. He used to say that to you all the time. And uh, Dermo's done it again. And we've came off at halftime and Tommy's walking up. He's like, I'm going to tell you this right now. You can draw the ball again with the outside of your foot. I'm cancelling. I'm going to cancel your flight right now. You're going to go home. You'll be in all weekend and I'm going to pass the ball and you're going to, going to control it inside of your foot. And I remember the fear in Dermo's face. Every time the ball came up, all he was thinking about it, control, just fucking control the ball the inside of my foot. I don't give a fuck if I lose it. I'm just going to control the inside of my foot. But that, again, that was kind of, that was how he was with you, mate. But then on the other side, like the amazing bits. And I remember like, he'd be standing with like Billy McNeil and, he, him and Billy and he'll be standing in reception at Celtic Park. We'd walk in for training like, ah, Billy, what a fucking player this boy's going to be. Aye. What a player he's going to be. He's going to he's gonna make Celtic millions. What about status? And you'd be like, ah. You'd feel a million pound, didn't you? If you but I've never done me. I'd have walked out the dressing room. The next boy would have walked in about <laughs> Billy. This boy's going to make Celtic. <laughs> it just, he just had an um, unbelievable balance, mate, of the fear. But, oh, mate, he's the only guy I've ever met in my life I would go search and say like part to find out where Aye. he was just to be around him and get him just so he would speak to us for, for two minutes. Even at that age, mate, I remember thinking, obviously you got your mum and your dad and I, mm. I remember thinking, that's, that's who I want to be in my life, man. Aye. That's the effect Aye. he had on you, mate. No, you again, no, the... just in terms of being a nice guy, just the, every and he had and he's... the role model, isn't it? Uh -huh. What do you think would have made of you as a manager? <laughs> I met his daughter in uh, Coyers. Right. Uh, just before we, me and my two wee boys went to, uh, and we always love seeing each other because like, I was a massive, like, me and him got on really well. Right. And they, they make jokes that he used to love me more than he loved Jonathan, the son. <laughs> they've made jokes, I think they've said it on like videos and stuff like that. And when you see her, she genuine kind of like right. love. So right. he's always, it's, like, it's how he's brought his kids up as well. They're mm -hmm. the exact same Jonathan's and, all, and all, he messages me, Jonathan, great to see you're doing well, mate. Uh, but she said, she was like, me and my boyfriend were, watching the, the documentary and I said to him, he said, my dad would uh, absolutely love this. Aye. So again, mate, you're, pff, I'm sitting in coins nearly fucking close to tears. But it must be good for you as well because obviously you you had a relationship with him, they had a relationship with him and they know that's how you would have felt. Do you know what I mean? It must uh, be a form of what you're doing uh, as well. Do you know what I mean? Again, a lot of what I do is him, mate. Eh? Aye. In terms of how I fucking, I'm not trying to copy him, but fine. It's not, you're, uh, you're not, I'm going to be like Tommy, but Aye. the times you did, you go, fuck me, that was, like, they'll be done a drill all night, and I was stopped and I'm like, to be calm, fucking pass the ball properly. And I'm like, fuck me, man, that's, <laughs> that's what he used to say. Man. And it's scary how much of an effect, not that you're trying to be him, but how much of an effect he had on positive impact, though. Positive impact, mate. Even how we kind of play is, I mean, people talk about fucking Guardiola, I mean, I'm, right. we, said we were doing stuff like that with Tommy when we're 16 year old, wingers coming off the side fullback. Well, getting you think, yeah, Tommy won Celtic team, more like that. They're like Tom DeCanio, Van yeah. Hoydonk, they were like, attack, fucking, attack. Uh, but bit like Angie's uh -huh. team. You know, Andrew, again, that's probably why I'm so fond of Angie. Kind of reminds Aye. me a lot of Tom, eh? Because he's got a great sense of humour. Aye. Which you're getting maybe on the podcast, you, you can see, but there's certain bits that get cut out here and there because Aye. obviously you say, like, I've got a brand to keep upholding. Mm -hmm. But he's a proper, got a good sense of humour, mate. You can hear a laugh on me, but then he's always got that side, right? If you want to ask him a question, mate, he's looking at you like, do not fuck this up. <laughs> do not fuck this question up when you're like that. <laughs> but again, uh, uh, but Tommy, like, the way we play is, We'd be out for hours, mate. Right. Hours. Right. Hours, hours. Again, he was so like, we would travel out of cones for hours, mate. But he made it he, he made it seem amazing. Aye. But it was so basic. But the enthusiasm that he put in Aye. it. And the way he would sell it to you, imagine you on the left wing, this is what you're gonna be doing at fucking wing it. And you're like, ah, this is brilliant, man. But it was so just so but just his enthusiasm for football and for life, mate. Yeah. Just such a again when you meet his daughter and that obviously I think they've said before kinda rather had him for the time that they had him than Aye. a normal dad for, for someone, but he was like a great, great role model oh, here. 100%. But I even had a guy in Dundee that was the same, Sean Smith, when I first got scouted for Celtic, so his name was like massive in Dundee, everyone knew Sean, he was an mm -hmm. old guy, 82 year old he was, so he was a scout for Celtic, Tommy, him and Tommy were obviously close, and uh, he'd come up and stand, he'd always stand in the distance with a big Celtic jacket on, and he, I remember coming up to my dad and that feeling of, mm. fuck, I think I'm going to get scouted for Celtic here, man. 
you wouldn't even you would like look you'd be playing but you'd be looking at him to see if he was going to go my dad's going to go and he walked up to my dad and I'm thinking yeah, my dad's like that was uh, Sean obviously the Celtics getting what you should have got and I was like oh my oh, god man. and then he was like he, he was like I'd met a Tommy before I met Tommy mate. he was the aye. same guy aye. so he was 82 right stayed with his missus and the Perth Road had a lovely house and uh, 82 we trained two nights a week training on a Saturday me Mark Fullerham, who's now the other show right. manager. Ross Wallace, remember uh -huh. Wallace that played with Celtic. Michael Gardine, who's at Montrose now, who's at Ross County. Uh, Charlie Adam was there when I first right. went. Um, so a good crop of players there. Brilliant, mate. Aye. Brilliant. And uh, so we train Monday, uh, sorry, Tuesday, Thursday. But should it, should, this is tight again, enthusiasm for football. So we train Tuesday, and Sean, Sean used to say this, if any of want to do extra, phone me anytime and mm -hmm. I'll come out. Now, I still remember his phone number now, double six eight two three one. <laughs> Every time you phone him, he's my double six eight two three one. I was like, Sean there. This is not a fucking 11, 12 year old kid. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, two minutes, Sean, we come on. He's like, oh no, me old mucker, what's up? And I was like, you fancy a kick it with Sean? He's like, yeah, I'll come and get you. Any time of the day, any, come pick you up. We'll phone Midge, try and get Midge out. So we'd train Tuesday, Thursday, but mate, Monday, Wednesday, there'd be two or three years out, kicking Aye. the ball every, he'd, every, every, any night, mate, he'd come and then he'd take you to Tesco for a bacon roll. And then take you up the road. It was fucking what a great kind of upbringing we had, mate. Yeah. But you've been lucky in that sense, obviously, with the people that have been there uh -huh. in your early years. But then I don't think about as as I explained to the start, it was great. But you're kind of yeah. no molly coddled. But these guys are so good at what they uh -huh. do that you kind of end up relying on them. Where well, it fills a void for you, doesn't it? Uh -huh. It fills that you don't need to motivate yourself because nah. you've got because they were on you all the time, uh -huh. mate. So when that kind of goes, that's what I'm saying about. Is it better to, to have that or is it better to have the other side where Aye. you need to find that self-motivation within yourself? So that's why I never try and get the, the balance with the boys. And do you, from the sense of, obviously, when you talk about your previous managers and coaches, do you find it hard to have that balance between keeping everything kind of calm or losing your shit? Or uh -huh. How thin is that line when you're watching a game? Does it, if you see things that are only going well and... Obviously, you see bits in the documentary when you fucking, you go full, full all in. Does it take a lot for get to you at that point? <sighs> probably not. First, I was probably too reactive. I have Aye. said that before. Too reactive, kind of explained it with the, the way dressing rooms especially, mate. You're just straight in and you're Aye. going on your reaction. Whereas I always Aye. try to get a couple of minutes to myself to compose my thoughts. But sometimes reacting is not the worst thing, mate, because like I said with the canoe, it's kind of what made you love him. That mm -hmm. He was he was very reactive, the canoe. Um so, but then you got to see the full passion. Whereas maybe sometimes when you do are you go away for a couple of minutes, you know the way you probably and the boys Aye. maybe think again, it's trying to get that balance in it. So maybe there is times where I'm so angry with someone that I will just go in and fucking Aye. react. But I do think it is. I think again, like for ten years ago, I'm talking about with the canoe with that reactive. I think players quite liked it, but I don't know if play, modern players do me. I think behind a, a rant there needs to be information. There needs to be Aye. a purpose of why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. so just go in and go fucking mental. I don't think it serves any sort of purpose. Aye. So when I do do that, again, I'll evaluate myself so, and I'll take no problem on Tuesday coming in and going, nah, listen, lads, I thought about how I reacted Saturday. I was mm -hmm. fucking probably wrong. I right. apologise. Um, I'll try and fucking, I'll try and be better. I'll try and right. compose myself maybe a wee bit better, give a wee bit more information. Because I think players, like I said, I understand that I'm a new manager. I'm not yeah. going to come in and be fucking yeah. Pep Guardiola. I'm going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. As long as we're, we're all man enough to own up to our mistakes right. and like I said, try and do better. So, it's, it's hard. Again, you're constantly, every minute, mate, you're trying to set and guess yourself. Aye. What's the right thing to do? Aye. And that's where you say about the difference between a coach and a manager. When I was a coach, mate, I never had to think about what I was going to fucking say at halftime. So, although I'm caught up in the game, I'm still thinking, right, how do I, what, what do we need to, what, what kind of talk do we need, what, what talk do we need at halftime? Mm -hmm. So, although you're concentrating on the game, we're fucking five minutes before the end, you're like, right, how do, how do, I, make it, how do I make us better in this halftime talk? So, Aye. just constant thoughts, mate, all the time. Uh, everything you say, you kind of, you need to make sure, you, no, make sure, but, Everything you say will will, will stick with them. Right. Do you know what I mean? And that's Aye. that's where you kind of your head works over dry. Uh, your 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 head never stops. Well, you've only got that moment to say it as well. So exactly. once you put it out there, it's it's uh -huh. hard to get it back in. Definitely. What about obviously you're you're still early, and as you're saying, you're only a few months into the season. What do you think is the biggest learning you've found so far for yourself that you've kind of maybe never knew before you started? Uh, so you talking about winning, mate? What a shite. No. Again, that last day, the first two documentaries, if you watch me, every fucking, before every talk, win, win, Aye. win, win. What Aye. does win mean? How do you win? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I went away for that. That was the biggest learning thing because you're putting pressure on boys to win. Right? 
Aye. Everyone wants to win. Somebody's got to lose. Aye. Guys, tell us what's the best way to win. See well, if you see if you concentrate on this is how I think suits us best to win games of football. See if we do that, lads, mm-hmm. anything can happen again. You're never guaranteed a result. Aye. I think you said it before in one of your podcasts when you're saying if you say it, your team it's a must win game, what do you say if you lose? Exactly. Well, fuck, is that as fucked in? <laughs> you're still getting 20 games to go. Uh, like, what do we do now? It's because when, if you talk about one another time, then when, because what was happening to us at the start of the season, mate, when I'm talking about one another time, you see when they went one done, the boys are like, fuck, we need a win, man. Aye. We need to try extra harder when you did it. <laughs> and that's why we were going one done and we were going completely away from our game plan. I'm sitting thinking, why can, why when we go one done, do we fall completely? And I'm thinking, well, you're full, you're fucking. Aye. You're you're kind of saying we need to do something differently. Whereas now, if we go one, they'll do. I go, lads, it's fine. Right. Just stick to what we're doing. If we, as long as we do what, what we're asking you to do, mm-hmm. and you, I always say, bring your own individual quality and stick to what we are as a core right. squad, what we want as a team. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy, lads. Eh? Right. Because, like I say, results can happen. So that's that, that's been the biggest learning curve. Fucking demanding that people win, mate. Right. Somebody's got to lose. I always say it. Hundred percent. And then, as you say, it's that kind of because you can go out and plan your game. Go a goal down after 20 seconds and your players are sitting going, fuck no, we need to win. He's going to come in at half time now. We're uh-huh. fucking losing already. Uh-huh. How do you actually, how do you fit it on? Because uh-huh. you've also got the team, you've got the podcast, you've got kids, you've got a missus. Where do you get the time? Uh, I mean, I think that's kind of, people say I had me more time, but I, I've got more time than my mates who work fucking constantly. And right. My mates are joiners and sparks and, they start at six in the morning, mate, and then I finish at fucking seven at night. My right. mate's got his in company and goes home and does his books. So I've got plenty of time compared to, to, mm-hmm. compared to guys. Where my time's taken up is in here, mate. Which I don't get a time when I think about football, which is hard. Can you ever switch off here? No. I've tried, mate. I fucking my, set, my <laughs> sister-in-law, Katie, who, she's a nurse. And I sat, she was, we actually had a Sunday and she was like, how's things? And I was like, I can't switch off, man. She's like, you need to meditate. And I was like, oh, I can't fucking meditate, man. <laughs> They need to meditate. So I was going to try it, mate, but I just thought, so it's, it's like, takes you, see, my missus and kids are talking to me, mate, I'm, I'm there. Somewhere else in your but head. I'm still thinking about football, eh? Right. It's crazy, but I don't think, I don't think you should, mate, eh? I don't, why should you lose that? That's obviously what you're passionate about. And, right, definitely. And if that's what, again, I love talking about football, mate, eh? it's right. what I talk about all the time. If I meet somebody, I've said it, but if I meet somebody that doesn't, doesn't talk about football, mate, I'm fucked. <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> Genuinely, like, I can make small talk and stuff like that, but then it's like, pfft, right, mate, I'll see you later, man. Got I suppose, hands. but for your family and that, you've had football all your life, so it's not as if it's, uh-huh. it's a new thing, do you know what I mean? It's always been there, so they probably know that that's just you. Uh, no, exactly. I, again, it's like what your product, your environment, uh, like, all I've done is football, mate. Right. I, obviously, I worked for a bit with the, the mail and the, the kitchens, but since we were like 11, mate, that's been my mm-hmm. life. Right. On, 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 on like a, no professional level like on a per like constant. Mm-hmm. So it's saying like it was like as I said to you, we trained with day football every night, eh? Right. And then you right. come in full time and every day you're there. And every at night you're watching football. So it's like I've not had really had time. I've never done a college course. I've never right. studied anything else. I've never mm-hmm. read about anything else. Any book that I read to say about coaching or, right. or football. Because that's I couldn't see why you gave me a book about fucking an astronaut, mate, I'd mm. read a page and fucking fling it in the bag, you know what I mean? It's, Aye, I'm so only interested in football. Football. Mm. Uh, it's my, yeah, I don't know, what, what are you in it? Aye, same, mate. Same, I could watch 30 games a week and no, uh, no be bald about it. What do you study at uni? Business. Uh, and what is that to go on in there? I would like to have my own business at some point, but even with that, I still link it all back to football. So even when you talk about business, you then talk about Owners, directors of football. Do you like to do that? Managers. Oh, I love all that stuff, uh-huh. mate. I just love all the... I love all the psychology behind it. Good See that. all this stuff about... Let's see that high-performance podcast. Good that. When they talk to... Like, when they had Gerard on, Lampard on. You get to see how these guys tick. Have you listened to Eddie Jones' on oh, that? Oh, tremendous, mate. Eddie. Tremendous. But as you said, it's not just football. You know, let's see, like, the F1 guys and all that. And you're like... F- have you watched that Drive to Success? Oh, Brilliant, that. Huh? Unreal, mate. It's great. How do they tick in that environment? It's Again, fat boys. I, I always think of this like, this, I'm going to sound like a fucking idiot here, but I'm going to try and explain it. I always think about football, right? People just see fat boys being on the pitch and kicking a ball, but it's, it's got Aye. everything that, that happens in life, Aye. politics, everything happens within a football Aye. team, mate. It's, it's everything. It's like Sopranos, people say Sopranos is about uh, 
The Sopranos is about uh, gangsters. It's no, mate. It's about oh, everything that Aye. happens in life. Whether you're a bin man or whether you're a gangster, mate, your family, things that come up in your life. And that. Aye. I love shit like that, mate. Football's like that. Oh, 100%. But I think you notice that as well when you're... See, when you're watching games and maybe your pals are there, you're talking to folk about it and they'll be like, oh, that player's shite. Or I get it when I go to the games and you listen to fans and you're like, fucking man. No idea what's going on with that guy. Uh-huh. Like, it doesn't go to intentionally miss an open goal or uh-huh. miss a chance or there's so much more to it than but again, just walking uh-huh. out. That used to bother me, mate, like fans and when I'd be sitting, but now, it, but that's a fan, mate. That's Aye. what makes football brilliant. Aye. So I, fans are well, I think fans are well within their right to, Aye. to talk like that because at the end of the day, mate, they're paying their money. That's, they want to give their opinion then. Aye. But like you say, what they didn't realise is stuff might be going on. But again, it's the same with anybody's work, mate, isn't it? Aye. Like, Stuff going on in your life, it's, it makes your job more difficult. But football is, it's such a... If you've if you if you've never been in football and you came in, it would, it, like, I think that's what they do. So many people have said to me, like my sister-in-law, my other sister-in-law is my brother's missus. She's like, is that what happens in a... Is that what happens in a football dressing room? Oh, the people, aggression. Ah, like, <laughs> also, that's the way people talk to each other, right. eh? Because my missus as well, I kind of really watch it. She'll watch it and I'll say, watch it and tell me if there's like, any like, glaring that Have you ever watched it? it? No. She'll stick it on me and I'll kind of <laughs> sit and fucking, but I need to leave. See, when I'm talking and that, I need to leave now. And she's, she even, she goes like, you, you look like a fucking psychopath. <laughs> you look like an idiot. And I'm like, oh, I know, but that's just, the, that's, well, that's the way fit boys, eh? But you're in the, you're in a zone. You're no, I know. there's no logical thinking. When no. you're in that environment, you're just thinking about the game and, and what you need to do. It's because, like, I don't think there's many other jobs in the world where you're doing what you absolutely love and it's what Aye. your passion is. So, Aye. of course, Aye. 100%. That's how you're going to come out, eh? Whereas, if, see, if I was going to go on a fucking restaurant, mate, I wouldn't be the way I am in a fit because I don't love it. I don't, I'm not as passionate about it as, no. I, as I am with that. Whereas, this is. And if you're working in a restaurant and drop a plate, nobody's got to stand up and shout, you're useless prick. Exactly, do you know what I mean? It's, uh-huh. it's totally different. But even from a. Even from a fan perspective, see when you think about the amount of energy you put into a, a club and you're like, fucking hell, man. Uh, that was the, that was the big thing as well. See, when you first start, the amount of stuff that you need to do, mate, like right. outside the, the actual team, is fucking blows your mind. Right. Blows your mind, man. And it's you're like, I cannot be fucked in this, but right. it needs to be done because who else is going to do it, mate? Do you know what I mean? Well, when you're at a Man United, Man City, you've got people to do that for you, but... Right. Fucking ordering food for the boys after games, mate. You need to get that all sorted. Aye. You need to get every buses and fucking training pitches and arguing with other teams that don't want you on that training pitch. So you need to go and find someone else real before you can get just consumes everything. Uh, yeah. But again, that's kind of died down. First two months was, was really tough. And you're like, this is fucking too much, man. Aye. But that's died down now. It's you're, you're mainly concentrating on the football because we've got all that kind of sorting and running well. Right, so. It's good, that way. You should start a Paul Ferris lookalike business. You made a fortune, man. Do you think? Mate. Do you think you look like him, nah? No. Shite myself here thinking that <laughs> Ferris is going to batter us. <laughs> and uh, to a lesser extent, Brian Rice. Brian, oh, bad oh, behave yourself, man. <laughs> Fucking hell. It's just with a... Cut that book. What is that? Is that a transplant? <laughs> Aye. Is it, mate? Where'd you go is for that? It's a tattoo. Oh, is it? Aye. You're going to grow right the... In. I was like a bald... Could you grow a beard? Well, I've got... I've got alopecia, so... It, comes and goes but it seems to be kind of growing all right oh, i'll definitely grow it uh-huh. 100%. i like to see like the no skinhead but the uh, it, just with the, with the beard that looks good mate 10 hours of pain mate it's not fucking recommended is that what that was uh-huh. so you're actually getting your skull tattooed uh-huh. guy that does my tattoos mate got the back of his tattooed right you got a guy for poland to come in there and the guy for poland was like i'll usually do this in three sentences and right. he's like nah just do it in one batter it out in one I can't remember the exact number of hours he was sitting there for me, but he said it was like... You just get to a point you've like nah, you just, Your I, fucking body just goes numb. You just shut down, mate. Pain is beauty. Uh, it's worth it, mate. Go oh, 100%, it. man. 100%. Um, so wait, sorry. Was it a gun? It's like a... I do gun, eh? Ah, I see like you're getting a tattoo and it's the same kind of... Your head. It's just like a smaller needle. And it's oh, like... Mate. Just fucking constant. Don't get me wrong, see when you've got it done, you're like, aye, that actually looks all right. Uh, I'm happy good. with that. But, aye, it's fucking... So how many, was that one sitting? No, three. Uh, that's what three he said, three. Um, and then you go back every like six months or something and get it touched up. But it's worth it. Uh, like, I, I used to be pure paranoid about it, see, before I got it done, because you would kind of patch. And then when I got this, I was like, fuck it, man, don't care. No, it looks good. how it looks, man, and you're uh, kind of... 
Stop worrying about what other folk think. So what do you, what do, what do you hope for Broomhill? What do you, what do you hope is going to come in? I don't want you to say we're going to win everything because you don't, you don't know what's possible, but what's what's your hopes for it over the next few years? I know, I'll say it. I want I want to win, mate. That's right. why I'm, again, I'm kind of contradicting myself in terms of <laughs> I wouldn't tell the players this and they'll maybe watch this, but in fact, no, do you know what? See, again, if the boys come in and do exactly what we ask, we'll get our absolute event. See, if we don't get there at the end of the season, right. so be it. I think we've taken over two years. They've kind of gave her two years to try and mm -hmm. be successful, right. whatever success looks like. Because again, you go win this league, mate. I'm not saying that we're going to do that, but right. you go win this league and then you need to go and play the Highland League, the winners of the Highland right. League, and then you need to play the team that finished bottom of the league too. So it's probably the mm -hmm. hardest league in football to get mm -hmm. out of. Obviously, Bonnie Rig Rose managed it last year. We're doing this with a brand new team. Right. Bonnie Rig Rose, again, good team, but they, they, I think they've been together like four or five years. Right, established. Players, so again, it's a tough league. I speak to a lot of people who were in the league last year and say, the league's the hardest it's been this mm -hmm. year. Obviously, Peter have probably seen us came, coming in and think the exposure right. it's going to get. We're going to have a wee right. go at it. And obviously, maybe try no try and stop us, but the fact that the league's going to have a lot of expo exposure, why don't we go and be one of the teams mm -hmm. that, that does well right. in it because of what could come for it? So I think, like your Spartans, they, 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 they'll go for it. Berwick will go for it. Uh, East Cobride will obviously go for it. Trenent, I think, are, are, are having a right good go. Mm -hmm. So... Um, there's a lot of teams that, that, right. are, that are decent and the Cali Braves are another one who we played the other week but they're really good a lot of um, experienced teams as well isn't it? it's... Uh, again like you say that that team spirit mm -hmm. makes it goes a long way within a right. team obviously when you've got a team that have been together for years that's that's there whereas we're trying to not only build a team on the pitch but trying to get a, a team off the pitch as right. well so it's been tough but as I say I need to give the boys massive credit and, and mm -hmm. that and it's why they've, I've signed the kind of boys that have because they've built right. that team spirit Again, along with Dell and Slaney, they've played a massive part in that, um, and the older boys as well. So that's where I've kind of, it's not football management, it's not just about putting a team on the pitch, it's getting the right people around you and the right okay. players, and then and our, our boys have been brought. So again, I, over the, the course of the next two years, mm -hmm. just want to, I want a team that people come in, obviously you want to win, but I want to, uh, I think at first fans were coming because it was open going. But, right. I mean, the crowds have continued to be good and mm -hmm. I think that that only happens if the product on the pitch is Definitely. good I think people yeah. come and watch it once and the football's fucking shit I don't right. think it matters if it's right. open I think they come back so the fact that we've had kind of consistent crowds that's a, that's a big boost for right. I, like, I like people c to come and enjoy watching my right. team play football mate, mm -hmm. because I think we are, that's what I want again that's, that's how I've been brought up you need to come and fucking entertain people right. and they're paying money to watch it so right. obviously I still think we need to get better say that to the boys all the time we're Although we're doing okay just now, mm -hmm. uh, we need to get better. We need right. to continue to get better. So if we keep, as, as long, I think if, if you keep seeing progression, mate, then I think you're doing a good job. So again, another big thing that I just say, stop chasing victories. If you see your team getting better all the time, all the time mm -hmm. you're doing your job. So continue to do that, and then whatever comes for that, then. Right. But I think as soon as you kind of you see that you're not getting through to the players, and, and then right. that'll probably be your time to go. But as as of yet, um, I'm really enjoying it. So continue to do it for as as long as the players are. Are listening. Yeah. Do you feel you must feel lucky to be in it because watching obviously the watching the documentary you done about the hydro and that and you were talking about when you finished at Dundee and you were kind of falling out with your dad and you were just struggling with life and trying to get a job and that to be where you are now. Do you look back on that and be like, Fucking hell man, what a four or five years this has been? No, me? no, not really, because I should have done it earlier. No. But again, you kinda look back and regret it, but Ah, of course, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking proud of what I've done. Right. It's not just me. There's been a lot of people that have kind of right. done it. Um, but I just hate it. I hate. I still hate that I was ever that person. Eh? Right. I think my life could have been so much better. But like I said, there's no point in looking back. But if you mm -hmm. are in kind of the, the moments you're sitting on your fucking eighth class in Edwin, you start to think, <laughs> done all right, but uh, we're doing all right. But uh, why, why was I ever like that? Why did I allow myself to get like that? But again, that's what kind of keep pushing and right. pushing us on today. So maybe right. I needed that in my life to kind of. Get a di different perspective on life, but, but your kids change that as well, mate. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Like, big, see, when I've had kids, mate, I'd have probably fucking stuck at just doing the Royal Mail and, and delivering kitchens. Do you think I just plodded uh, on? I didn't know what to be somebody that they looked at and thought, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Do you know what I mean? Aye. So, Aye. like, again, the, the, the not the best thing, obviously, I love football, but my two boys love it, mate. Mm. Genuinely, can I wait for the game to come on on a weekend because they're mad into football, the ball boy, the games, mate. And ah, brilliant. My wee boy, he's just got a phone. He's primary seven now, so he's just got a. Uh, he's just got his first phone. He's got Instagram. I was sitting in the living room and obviously followed him, and I was just scrolling, and it came up. He a picture of Big Brothers. Did you see the documentary? Aye. When they scored. <laughs> Dale's fucking. 
Dell's banjoed him, and Dell Del thought he was a pol- Del, Del thought he was a Polish because he had the uh, yellow bib on and banjoed him. And uh, Big Brothers picked him up, had him on his shoulder, and he put the picture up, and underneath it he wrote, "Best moment of my life." Oh, it's amazing! And like, this is brilliant, and every he's always that's why he talks to me about. It. He's like, "Who's your favourite player?" And I'm like, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> so. I'm not telling you, because he aggressed me. He tells the boys everything. Eh? So again, I'm sitting. I take his phone and I fucking check it because you need to check boys' Aye. kids' phones now. And I've said this in the podcast. And I check his direct message. He text message and Brock. Hi Brock. It's it's Frankie. It's Sai son. I'm like, ah. <laughs> saying what? Just general stuff. Well done today, or fucking. <laughs> what about my dad today? Or something? The boys must be like, fuck off. Leave me alone, man. <laughs> but they all fall. That, that again, the type of boys that are mate. They've all followed them back and. I say to them, just ignore them, man. But oh, they all get the time of day. They're good boys, so. He's dishing out pep talks at night. I love that. Mate, you should hear him. So again, Evan <laughs> pulled me. Yeah, Evan that plays us good boys. Oh, Evan was like, your, your wee boy's funny. He's like, ah. what, what Evan was a sub, he was warming up. And he says to Frankie, he says, who you got tomorrow? And Frankie says, oh, we're playing this team. And uh, Evan's like, oh, they're a good team, aren't they? And he's like, ah. and your boy went, like, I don't concentrate on the opposition. I only focus on what I'm doing. <laughs> And he's like, he's obvious. That's how he talks, mate. He, talk, he talks like he's a fucking football coach. He listens to it. See when you master talking, mate, I look over it and he's listening to it. Taking it on. Takes everything, mate. But he's a grass, so you'll go and tell her mum or something that I've said to her. You sit and talk and you're like, ah, shut the fuck up. But no, that that's a proper boy. Senior boys, they love Aye, it, mate. That's tremendous. Uh, it's good. So it's a good feeling that I get to kind of share that with him. Because mm. I was up in Peterhead. And they never got to come up and see. I think Frankie came up a couple of times. Oh, yeah. But Peterhead with Brown Jim used to let him come in the dressing room and that, mate, and see the words he used to get to hear. Because <laughs> my, 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 my miss is a big one for, like, I'm a fucking scumbag, mate, but she's, like, proper, like, speak properly. Right. If, if they didn't say a certain word properly, right. she'd, no, you don't say it like that. So my wee boy started saying, he'd and then, and, it, and she hates it. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing kicking my head? That's what he speaks like, and she hates it. So swearing's like a no go. Right. Well, not except for me, obviously, I swear all the time. But right. for they two, it's a no go. So. I always say to him when you when you come to football you can swear. It's the only time you can swear. So me, Slaney and George, who's our general manager, we were up watching under twenties right. last Friday. They were playing still in uni. And uh he he thinks he's Robbie Halliday takes the twenties with Andy. Right. So he thinks he's, he loves Robbie and Andy. He thinks he's pals with me again, he messages them on Instagram as well. Uh so he's always up to them. Uh so they like they they're good one, they're brilliant one. So the ball gets booted out of the fence and I think Andy or Robbie was like ah, uh Somebody go and get the ball. And I went, Frankie, go and you get the ball. And he went, at me. It's on the fucking road. <laughs> I went, like, what? And he went, it's on the fucking road. <laughs> but he wasn't sure. And he was looking at us like that. And George, me, Slaney, Robbie, and Andy while the game was going, mate, pissing ourselves, <laughs> laughing, mate. He, he proper thinks, he, 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 he thinks he's part of the coaching staff, mate. <laughs> the, one of the boys, because the 20 sometimes they're a hit linesman. Right. It's a ref that does it. And we say to the ref, one of our boys will take because it's fucking impossible right. for a ref to call off sides. And the wee boys, like, uh, linesman and Frankie's like him. Frankie's like, you're better at being a linesman than you are being a striker or something. That's what he says to one of the twenties. I was like, who the fuck are you talking to, man? <laughs> he, I was like, to me, guy, tell me, shut Guys get up the road, confidence, shut I know, mate, for a wee nine-year-old. <laughs> but he, he loves it, man. He, he genuinely, like, loves it. He, he loves big brothers and that. He's always like, I think brothers my favourite player. But he loves Brock as well. He loves Brock. But it's good that they, they engage with him as well. Uh-huh. That's again, amazing. They're good, they're good types of boys, mate. And that's why I've got so much time for them. And that's what again I say to them, boys. The reason I work so hard is because you deserve it. Aye. See how you for how you work mm-hmm. and the people you are, you deserve. I need to give my fucking Aye. maximum every time I'm here. Aye. They're a great bunch, mate. Honestly, you need to come and come out again, mate, and meet them, mate. Eh? No, honestly, really good will. boys, good group. Love it, mate. Um, how would you how would you manage a young Simon Ferry? Oh, I hate him. Would hate you him, actually mate. hate him? Hate him. Always make. Do you think you'd be able to spot and... the signs? From from when you were kind of going through the points, I don't know. Again, because I'm obviously just starting out. I don't know if I'm, I'm if I'm great at that, mate. Maybe I right. need to get better at that. Right. Um, but in terms of me as a player, I really fucking hate myself. Right. I was managing a. Uh, I know, I know. Again, that's. I always say the boys. My playing career is the biggest. I don't want to talk about myself all the time. My, my playing career is my biggest regret in my life, mate. Right. Doesn't matter what I do outside. Obviously, you love football, love managing, but. Playing's the best thing in the world, mate. And I still fucking, again, on my glass of wine, thinking, why do you make such a fucking arse of that? Aye. But then at least you're honest enough with it uh, as well, because you probably get people that would still look at it and go, do you know what, I've done all right. uh, Nah. I'm good with that. Uh, I just try to learn from it all the time, eh? And not just myself, but 
to, to pass on you. No. Again, I think that's where Slaney's good. He doesn't really make excuses. He doesn't blame coaches. He obviously no. blames himself. So between mm-hmm. the two of us, we try, I try to explain to the boys that like, you can do anything you want. You can, genuinely, boys, no. you can do anything you want football, mate. No. See if you dedicate yourself to the talent. The other boys are so talented, mate. I promise you. Wouldn't they just say that for the sake of mm-hmm. it? Eh? I always say to them, there's a reason why you're here, it's got nothing to do with talent, so, right. so you need to change some of this, it must be either uh, you're living or your mentality, right. and if you can change them boys, you can do anything you want in, in football, because I see players again, I think you mind me saying, like Matt Ritchie was no better than I was, when we were at Swindon, right. no better in terms of ability, and but you had a fucking drive mate, and a focus, right. and a right. commitment to, to what he was doing, and he's him and fucking... Right, 60, 70 grand. Again, it's right. not about 60, 70 grand a week, but the right. fact that he's reached his full potential, amazing, but... Matt Ritchie's no better player than Brock Watson or Jamie Semple Aye. or Aidan McLaughlin, Matty McDonald, uh, Evan, Callum, all these boys, James mm-hmm. Grant. I, I, I've watched them, I say that to my time, I've watched but I watch his training, I've trained with these guys, they're not, they're not any better in terms of their uh, decision making and ability. Aye. Matt Ritchie's just got a fucking unbelievable drive, mate, that you would never, never go away from. You, you, you couldn't match it, mate, his drive, eh, to be successful. But then he's probably thinking, look at the reward I've got at the end of it. Exactly. When you're sitting on that 60, 70, whatever it is, and you're making fucking serious dough. And then he can enjoy the rest of his life. He's, he's, he, he's, uh, he's made the sacrifices of me calling him a busy cunt for four years <laughs> at Swindon. He's now sitting thinking, look at look what it means Aye. to me, a busy. And you were sitting there fucking slagging me for not having a drink when we are in London and Brick Lane. He's sitting there with a fucking juice and I'm sitting there steaming. <laughs> thinking I'm the dog's bollocks, but in Aye. reality I'm a, the biggest fucking loser in the world. Aye, no, I know what you mean. Because I'm trying to bring him down for something that he d- that he doesn't want to do. So that's what Aye. I say. I thought everyone else would laugh. And I thought, I'm a fucking great teammate, man. Aye. Everyone thinks I'm hilarious, but in reality, you're a dick. Aye, when you look back on it, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But it's a hard thing to look back on. Yeah, uh-huh. but I think that's the most important thing in life. What I've always kind of tried to is evaluate yourself first and foremost. Eh? Look at yourself. And I, I try to do that a lot, mate. Because I think you can always get better no matter how you're Aye. doing. You, there's always, you make mistakes all the time. Everyone makes mistakes. Oh, it's that my boy doing, we watched it like Mother last night. I went, watch Matt O'Reilly, watch how many mistakes he makes in the game. Mm-hmm. Mate, see, if you actually sit and watch a player, Aye. and I'm talking for a team that's saying like dominate possession that win games, Aye. he makes loads of mistakes in the game. But does he give a fuck? Nah. It's got to get on, Just goes and gets the ball again and tries again. Aye. That's what, it's relatable to life. Oh. You're going to make it, you're going to make mistakes. I mean, the key one's probably like McCoy's. He used to miss three, four chances, but he would always be there for the fifth one. It's funny, it's funny if you mentioned that. We just done the Coopman show and Derek said they'd done a, a shot of glory film. Aye. It took McCoy to about 20 takes to kick the ball in the net for fucking six yards. It's, but it's, I suppose it's having that within you to be like, I'm not going to hide here. Give no. me the ball. Get, get, I'll score the next one. It's, but it. some people just fold in and kind of deal with that expectation. It's, it's That's difficult. what it comes down to, mate. Like I say about Matt Ritchie, mate. I used to play right centre midfield. He'd play right midfield. I'd pass him the ball and move to get it again. He'd take a touch and he'd fucking shoot. And I'd be like, Stop fucking shooting, pass me the ball. Aye. Pass it to them again, run into space, touch, shoot. Where the body, but that, Matty. Go to pass the fucking ball. Aye. They can't go on that, be shooting, Matty, pass the fucking ball. Next time, get the ball, bang, pass them, run into space, touch, poof, top in. <laughs> That's the difference, mate. Whereas, see if somebody said to me, pass, next time they got it, they pass the ball. Aye. He's like, I'm fucking, I'm being me. Aye, I'm doing what I'm doing. If I make mistakes being me and I feel, then fuck it. Aye. And that's what I love about Matt Ritchie, especially, mate, because he was the one guy, again, I'm not, I'm not saying Matt Ritchie's not a talented boy, but Aye. fucking extremely talented, one of the best left fits I've ever seen, but it's kind of that self. He even came to, when he first came to Swindon, mate, he was fucking struggling to get into it. I still say that, we speak quite a, quite a bit, but mm-hmm. went down to Newcastle, Bourne, I've seen him. When he first came in, mate, he was like miles off it. Eh? He was like this wee guy who was, it was too much for him, and he came, I think, tells, tells me now, he went away that summer, again, he was a big one for evaluating himself, and we all went on holiday, like I said, I probably went to New York, fucking came back fat as anything, mate. He got a personal trainer for every day in that summer and he came back like that. And he came back as fit as fuck and we just kind of fucking continued right, and continued and continued, mate. And what he's done is, is, a, is what a career he's had, mate. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I just love that, that he never cared, mate. Never cared what Aye. I Me slagging him, calling him a busy bastard and Aye. But, why you not coming out? Nah, I'm going up the road to got a game fucking during Aye. That. Why would you not do that, mate? Why then I you suppose then you probably, the way that you're describing yourself is probably the majority. Uh-huh. You did get the odd one or two busy players, like Neville and, and players uh-huh. like that. Like they, even they say it, they were fucking slaughtered yeah. weekly. And that's at Man United. You still get players there. Like, what are you doing? Why? Why would we be doing that back in the, the days? Why would we be seeing that as a bad thing? 
Because well, I say to the boys now, day Evan, you can't be successful at what you love. And that's what Marichi was doing 10 years ago. Why was I not doing that? Because I, I would, no, I didn't no. done anything to be a football player. Well, I, then, I, I used to say that, but I, obviously I, I, I wouldn't. Is it then, I'd much rather the social side that. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? When you're in the dressing room, the social aspect's massive as well. So you don't want to be that guy uh-huh. that's no going anywhere or you're sitting with an orange juice or something and you're taking fucking pelters. Because then you're going to be like, oh, none of them like me. So why do you think he's, he was he had that at that? Because we're, I think we're I'm maybe a, a year older, man. Why do you think he had that at a young age and I, and I never? I don't know. That was, that's the things that baffled me about life. Is that your upbringing? Is that who you're born as a person? I don't, see, I don't think it's upbringing. I think some people in their head go into situations. It would be in a dressing room or be in work where they're like, I don't care if people like me or they don't like me. How do you get that at a young age though? I think it's just one of the things that, see when you grow up and you see the opportunities in front of you, I think you then make that decision of, do I want to be popular or do I want to be successful at it? Yeah. And it's that kind of, Going out. and I say I say it to my kids and I'm like, don't don't just follow a crowd because they're all doing that. It doesn't mean it's the right thing. Mm-hmm. You need to do what you think works for you. And it's probably things like that. Because most people do it in their work as well. Like if you're sitting in a job and you're like, I want to do something else, but oh my pals are here, I don't want to move. It's having that kind of fuck it. I'm mm-hmm. still be able to talk to them and it must be hard in a football dressing room. A totally different culture. But see when I was like I always say this as well, like, when I was like 12 to 16, all my pals are going to drink and doing all sorts. At that age, I had that of, I'm not doing that, eh? Aye. But it was where when I got in her first team dressing room, I just fucking loved going out. <laughs> Aye. But then I suppose... I loved trying to carry on. Being in a first team dressing room at that age, you're exposed to things that a 17-year-old just doesn't get exposed Supposed to, do you know what I mean? You're, you're living a dream. Nah. And it's... I defy any kid that age not to get wrapped up in that. Uh-huh. Again, with Matty, he kind of stayed... He, well, I went down to swim and I was on my Aye. So you you were you weren't going back to mum and dad who'd maybe said Aye. dinner for all the crowd where I had a yourself? four year stag doing swing me. <laughs> four year stag doing me playing football on a Saturday. <laughs> Wild. But then you've even you've you've still had brilliant experiences for Aye. that as well. No, that's true. Again, I've made some good pals, but you'd give all that up to hear the fucking play for Newcastle every week, wouldn't you? Aye, hundred percent. Hundred percent, mate. But how long do they friends hang about for me? That's what I try again. Aye, certain situations Aye. your pals when you're and I suppose that's where the busy ones are like I don't need all these folk I'm just exactly. fucking I want the contract at the end of the, this graft it's funny like because I now look at it again I used to be the guy if we'd go on holiday I'd be desperate to make people laugh I would do everything I could stand at the pool like a dick and uh, and now I couldn't go, I couldn't care less Aye. about making people laugh, man. I just kind of fucking be who I am. Aye. And we were on, I've been on two kind of separate holidays in the summer. I was known in the guys' name, and by the way, they're good guys, but I only kind of met them for the first time. It was through mutual friends that we ended up meeting up. And I remember sitting in a fucking, and they were doing that, and I, I, I never pulled them out in front Aye. of me. I just pulled them and said, by the way, see, that's who you want to be. I'm brilliant, but I don't feel like you need to be like that, eh? Because I remember, I remember doing that. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, I don't know why I was like that, man. I was fucking desperate to make people laugh and look like an idiot. And it probably, but and Ken was like, that probably wasn't me, mate. But you said that earlier, it's insecurity is huge mm. because you see if you're the type of person that's always running stuff through in their head, that stuff's always there as well. Uh-huh. As much as the football and all that, you're sitting going, see, man, I just want to fit in here. If you're doing a swindling yourself, you're sitting looking at a dressing room, going, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I don't want to be doing here myself. Being the busy one that's away doing all their own stuff, when I can mix with a team and and have that side of it, and yeah. it's trying to find that balance of it works for you but obviously if you're in that environment you, you go with it don't you it's... and I sometimes think it's really like I would always kind of be that joker and make it like I didn't care because if I played bad on a Saturday I'd come and go ah, I don't give a fuck and that was kind of that was an excuse for playing bad my, and my biggest fear was look I'm dedicating myself to this and I'm shite on a Saturday Aye. how does that do you know what I mean that, do you know what I'm getting at Aye, there it's, it's fucking it's so hard to find it. You see, you even see it now with like young kids that are playing the game, and you're like, "Fuck it, man, you're heading for disaster here." Because mm-hmm. you, you can tell with their body language and how they conduct themselves, and you're like, "They're not that asked about the actual game side of it. They're just here for the money, or they're here for mm-hmm. the social Instagram. aspect, or they want to be loved." And yeah, you'll get the kind of Instagram side of it, but mate, it's such a fucking, it's such a fine line. Mm-hmm. But again, like line. you say, it's. It's like the other job, eh? So I do oh, feel for these boys as well because you're getting guys that are messaging you about fucking being agents at 16 and all that and they're filling your head with shite. So aye. 
you do it again. You you look at them and you think why you but you understand why it is, mate, because it's just oh. a completely different world to any other other life. It's fucking dream world. It's hard, it? mate. It is. It's tough. It's uh-huh. a dream world. Uh-huh. Mate, what an episode! I feel like that was very deep, meaningful. The other no, that was, isn't it? twenty minutes. Good, mate. I don't really get to the chance to. I only really talk about this when I'm like I said, eight wines deep, my missus, <laughs> and she's like, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> Sick of listening, sick, sick of hearing about you and your, what you could have done better. Nobody gives a fuck. At least she's honest, mate. Exactly, honesty honest. is everything, man. I'd just be fucking honest. 100%. Thank you so much. That's mate. a right pleasure, mate. Enjoyed Appreciate it. it.